You got this, Hank. This is going to be great. The AWLs are excited. But there's nothing. Yeah, that that part is like, just don't watch. Okay. Don't, don't buy it. No one watch. Don't no buy one buy it. it. Don't attend. Don't come. Don't do it. Don't. Come. I'm gonna come. Oh, I'm gonna come so hard. You know what? I'm gonna come too. Okay. All right, Jake. Nice. <laughs> On today's part of my take, we have our good friend Peter Schrager from Good Morning Football in person. We're in New York City. You probably, are, if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing this, and it's like, hey, where are these guys? Well. We are in New York City. We're in one of the pod rooms. Hank is producing. We're going to talk Championship Sunday. A little preview for the two big games on Sunday to see who's going to the big game. You like that? Super Bowl. Big game. Going to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Trademark. Registered. Very excited for that. We have Firefest. We're going to talk Doc Rivers to the uh, Bucks. We had a great Friday show. One of the last, second to last, penultimate football weekend of the year man that's sad but it's all Don't forget about the pro bowl that's true flag the pro football, ball baby. flag football we are uh doing this show together with apple tv this message comes from master of the air on apple tv plus from the executive producers behind band of brothers in the pacific comes the next masterpiece about the pilots who fought in the skies against hitler in world war ii this is pft's show austin butler takes flight in the nine episode limited series it's a thrilling and emotional epic that is not to be missed. I actually think this this show is so up your alley, PFT. I wouldn't be surprised if you did like a dream board like a couple of years ago about this show. I did, yeah. I had Kyle Sloter piloting one of the aircraft. <laughs> yeah, but besides like, that, it's, uh, man, it sounds awesome. I can't wait. I will be, you know what? I think planes are having a moment. They are. You had Top Gun Maverick. You've got this. You got Boeing. You've got that lady that got kicked off for uh, farting on the plane. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff about planes recently on this podcast. Yes, and people who have been on planes. Yes, so this show is going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Uh, it is out on January twenty sixth, which is right now when you're listening to this. So go check it out. Apple TV Plus uh, experience Masters of the Air on only on Apple TV Plus now streaming. Go watch it. We're going to watch it. We'll probably talk about it because it's going to be an unbelievable show. Masters of the Air. It is a show about pilots flying over the skies against Hitler in World War II. Masters of the Air, only on Apple TV+, Plus. now streaming. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Friday, January 26th, and Henry Lockwood is producing this show. Hey, throwback. Yeah, we're in a little throwback state. We're in New York City. Uh, we were traveling Wednesday night. We have Rough and Rowdy coming up uh, tonight. So if you buy it or you're, you're going to see this afterwards, you can still buy it all weekend. But Hank, it's a throwback. When was the last time you fully produced the show? Been a while, probably. Ooh, probably a year. Are you in charge of pressing the button? I'm not in charge of pressing the button. I That's just, still Max. Uh, yeah, I'm recording the show. We're sending all the files back to Chicago, and so Max not will fully be producing, editing Got it. the show. Do you remember, Hank? Like, I actually think about it. How crazy it was that you did all of the producing and editing of this show for how long? Two, three years. Alone, probably three years. Jesus Christ. Like thinking about back when we would do the Sunday episodes and it would be one in the morning and it was just Hank. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, I got to just grind this whole thing. The craziest was when we did the first Grit Week tour and I was the only one that like really knew how to operate the bus. So I was also like taking care of the bus. Yeah. And then we would do interviews You're producing, and I would yeah, the film them record the audio and do all that stuff that was bad you and don't get enough have, credit you would also have to empty the septic tank on the bus yeah sometimes like you know max max and memes I, I feel like they give me a little bit of like you don't do shit around here and i'm like back in my day like i was doing all this on, on my own like they they sometimes try to make me feel bad for like uh, you know and i leave i'm like all right see you guys and i can feel that like 
fuck you. The resentment. For leaving. Yeah. On the first. And in my head, I'm like, I don't, I don't feel bad at all. No. Like, one I, second. I remember we would show up to places for an interview, and we'd, we'd tell the people. I think we said this to uh, who was, who was the coach that we interviewed at Youngstown, uh, Trestle. When we like go into Trestle's office, we're like. Yeah, we need about uh, five minutes to get our cameras and stuff set up, and Hank would just give us this look like, what? You're like, you fucking assholes. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need five minutes. We need, it's just me. Yeah. I'm carrying everything. You're right, though, Hank. They they should not give you uh, any guff, have any resentment. This podcast was built on the blood, sweat, and tears of one Henry Lockwood. And also on the blood, sweat, and tears of me and Big Cat having to call Henry Lockwood at one o'clock in the morning to wake him up. Throw so that back. he could record the show. That was yeah. once. I went on a boat. It's one time. You went on a boat on a Saturday. All right, so we're here in New York. A little bit different. Uh, we're going to talk about conference championship. We do have our friend Peter Schrager in person, which is great. Uh, we get to catch up with him. Before we get into the games uh, in the NFL this weekend, we should talk a little bit about the other sports that are going on. Doc Rivers, officially the Milwaukee Bucks head coach. I. It's weird because they ESPN got rid of... St- uh, Jeff Van Gundy, Doc Rivers is like, yeah, I'm in, I'm ready, and then what? Halfway through the season, he's back in coaching. And the Celtics got Jeff Van Gundy. And the Celtics got wait. He's he, like a special assistant. Oh, that's oh. funny. Yeah, he's like an advisor type role. Oh, be Holy careful shit. with that. Yeah, Doc Rivers just kind of installed himself from being an advisor to now head coach. Yeah, I feel bad for Adrian Griffin. I feel really bad for him. Like you work your entire life as a coach to get a job coaching an NBA team. And they fire you after what forty three games, and you have a good record. Like I feel bad for him. Obviously, it wasn't working out to the point that they wanted. What are they in second place in in the conference? Uh they're currently in second place. Yeah, I feel bad for him. Uh, they they're kind of like blaming him for the lack of defense on the Bucks. Which yeah. do you know what happened in the off season? Do you remember? Yeah. the the personnel change. Yeah, made Drew in the Holiday. Yeah, and you got Dame, not exactly a, a lockdown lockdown perimeter defender. And then you bring in a first year coach, and you're like. Yeah, we're going to fire you because this advisor behind the scenes has been telling us that he wants to be a coach. And then I don't know if you saw the reports that Woj was doing on ESPN, on SportsCenter. They were like, Woj, can you talk us through how this whole situation played out behind the scenes? Woj spent like three hours going on various shows, refining his message over and over again. Uh I saw the first one that he did. And he was stumbling all over himself because he was like, yeah. And then uh, after they decided to make the move on from Griff at, at at that point, then the Bucks front office made contact with Doc Rivers' agent yeah. to discuss, and things have just gone really quickly since then. And then by the end of it, he had it down to a science where he was like, uh, "Yeah, you know, uh, the uh, representative from Doc Rivers made contact with the Bucks at this time. He had like the timeline nailed down. Doc Rivers was running this whole thing behind Correct. the scenes. I so the only reason I don't feel bad for Adrian Griffin." Um, and, and the Doc Rivers part is, is annoying. Like, he was kind of set up to fail the fact they brought in Doc Rivers and he had his eyes on coaching that team probably from the, from the first second he walked in the facility. But the only reason I don't feel bad for Adrian Griffin, and I might be minimizing the job of a coach in the NBA, but his only job was to make Giannis like him. And maybe Giannis never gave him a shot. Maybe Giannis was just never going to like him. But if you could just get Giannis to like you, you, do, you won't get fired. And so whatever... Like he should have, he should have been like, forget scheme, forget how I'm going to coach, just become Giannis's best friend, and I will at least have a shot. Yeah, I would imagine that Giannis was asked about this transaction. I would say that it, all the reports is they didn't really see eye to eye uh, from from the jump. But I still feel bad for him. Yeah, like as a person that you. Oh, and you, you got to remember, he's got probably a family. They got to move. They got to change schools. The yeah, kids, yeah, millions of dollars, but that buy doesn't out, buy. Yeah. yeah, you know, he still gets paid, right? He still gets paid. Probably if they win the championship, he gets a ring. Should get a ring. He should absolutely get a ring but yeah I, I do i feel bad for the guy just on a human level having that happen behind the scenes i think you're probably right that if Giannis liked him right if it if he was a, a disappointing head coach let's say they were in like fourth fifth place in the conference but Giannis liked him they probably would not make this move because they're thinking in the back of their heads we got to do we got to keep this guy happy right if you want to keep your job in the nba for a couple of years you could either one be so good that they can't fire you or two make the star of the team love you mm-hmm so I feel like, the, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, like, I think I could become best friends with Giannis if he gave me a shot. You think so? Yeah. Just be like, whatever you want, Giannis. Just, whatever offense you want to run, whatever you want to do, I would just, we'll just do what you want to do. He and I would simply go to to Raising Cane's every yes. day and order 50 chicken tenders. Exactly. Be yeah. like, hey, Giannis, you got any other siblings you want on the team? Yeah. Let me know. I can get everyone. Your son? 
You want to put him on the team? Cool. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. No problem. So, yeah, that was uh, the big news we also had in coaching. Jim Harbaugh has officially been named the coach of the San Diego Chargers. I did say San Diego Chargers because he played there, and I feel like that is just – they should, like – they should just be the San Diego Chargers because it's not really – like Jim Harbaugh coming home when it's the L.A. Chargers. We had the fun wrinkle of uh, the famous Chargers, uh, man, I got to find my wife. I'm so hungry for some P.F. Chang's tweet that the Chargers account, if people don't know, the Chargers Twitter account in like 07 was just run by a guy who would just do his personal tweets. Mm -hmm. A lot of tweets about P.F. Chang's. Fun wrinkle, Jim Harbaugh met his wife in a parking lot at a P.F. Chang's. I love that. Time is a flat circle. It's Time wild. is a flat circle. So maybe that was Jim Harbaugh running the account. I think Jim Harbaugh will be in a Super Bowl within the next five years with the Chargers. So Harbaugh is a great coach, a great NFL coach. There's like a clock that you have to put on Harbaugh, and we love him. But if you are like a GM, if you're another football guy in that front office, Harbaugh and you will probably get along really well for the first couple of years. Then – there will be an incident, and Harbaugh will not like you anymore because you're not enough of a football guy for him. And then after a while, uh, things are not probably not going to end fantastically out there when it does end, but you definitely have like a four- or five-year span where you guys are going to be an awesome football team, and Harbaugh is going to be a very, very good head coach. And I think actually, like, I think he'll have more time this time. It depends on how they structure it with, like, does Harbaugh get to call the shots GM-wise? Because that was the big thing in the Niners. He had the power struggle with the GM, and that's kind of with Trent Balky, and that kind of fell apart. I, I just think that once he starts winning, which he will do, I think his, his career NFL record is like over 70%. Yeah, it is. He, he, he will win. Justin Herbert will look good. They will go deep into the playoffs, and winning cures all. And if there is one franchise that Jim Harbaugh could change like how we perceive them the Chargers, whether it be toughness, injuries, like just bad luck, it's Jim Harbaugh. Like he's going to make them a tough team instantly. And Justin Herbert's a very good quarterback. So yeah, start the clock. Five years, I say. Five years, he will be at least in a Super Bowl. It's hard to win a Super Bowl once you get there. He will be in a Super Bowl within five years. Also, it was it, it's nice that Jim Harbaugh is trying to fulfill the prophecy of winning a Super Bowl so that not only can he sit at the big kids' table, but he can have one over his brother, We played the old clip of when we had John on and he was talking about how Jim Harbaugh would just hold his head underwater. When they were adults, Mm -hmm. they would wrestle in the ocean and he would hold his head underwater and he could feel that that was maybe because of the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think that there was definitely, it it had an impact on Harbaugh deciding to go to the Chargers, the fact that they play the Ravens next year. Yeah. I think Harbaugh saw that and he's like, yeah, you know what, I want want my revenge ASAP against my brother. And uh, the the press release w- was pretty great that the Chargers put out. It just said Jim Harbaugh is football personified. Yeah, he they is, were doing he, some he great tweets. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he is a football. He wants to. All, he's told us many times all he wanted to do when, when, from the very young age was play football until he can't play football. He wants to coach football, then he wants to die. Yeah, he wants. He probably wants to be buried inside of a football. Yes, as a coffin, just like get, chocolate get, football for everyone. Yeah, maybe, maybe get like thirty footballs and just put his ashes in all those, and then throw them out into the ocean. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of the Chargers. Uh, he will fix them right away. Now, Michigan. I, it's weird that people are like, he's leaving a mess in Michigan. I get it because of the NCAA, and there might be some sanctions coming. He just won a national title. He beat Ohio State three years in a row. If you're a Michigan fan, you sign up for that a hundred times out of a hundred. No matter what happens after this, you just won your first like outright national title since 1948, I think every single fan base would be like, yep, sign me up. Okay, we got sanctions. Oh, we're going to suck for a few years. Who cares? Who cares? Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Hang, hang the banner. He did what he was brought in to do. And uh, congrats to congrats to Michigan. You're probably pretty happy if you're a Michigan fan. Like, you're not happy that he left, obviously, but the way things worked out, you make that trade every single time. Yep. It's definitely worth it for you guys. And I think he finishes... Three and one against Ryan Day, possibly because I know he could he couldn't beat Urban. Uh, I think he was three and five overall. It might he actually be three and zero oh against Ryan Day because they canceled the COVID year. Uh, but either way, you have that over. Like Jim Harbaugh can be like, I did it. Like I I I I came back. It took a little bit longer than I expected, but we beat the fuck out of Ohio State every single year, and we won the national title. Fantastic football coach, and it's going to be interesting to see how how the Chargers deal with Patrick Mahomes. They gotta because beat him. He might be the best quarterback of all time. They, they're gonna just have to beat him. They're just gonna have to beat Patrick Mahomes. Do you think that's part of the 
the application process for somebody that's going to the AFC West? Like, what's your plan to take care of this guy? It is great that Harbaugh, like, because when we're talking to different people being like, what job is most attractive? It's like, well, you don't want to be in the AFC because of, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, CJ Stroud, all these guys are going to be good for the next 10 years. You really don't want to be in the AFC West. And Harbaugh's like, bring it. Yeah. Fucking bring it. Human body craves contact. AFC West, great coaches out there. Great coaches. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see how his return is to the NFL. NFL is better when you got Jim Harbaugh coaching in it. He gets people amped up. He gets He's going to get the city amped up. I'm interested to see what he's going to how he's going to deal with being like the little brother in their own stadium. Do they get are they not building? No, they're not. I'm thinking of the Clippers. They're yeah. not building a new stadium. It's, he's going to he's going to be pretty upset when he walks in and he sees like all this Ram shit everywhere. Yeah, he's going to tear like, it down. We're, we're going to have to we're going to have to put up some Chargers stuff. He might be the one who could bring back the Chargers to San Diego. He might bring back Boltman. Yeah. I also I just want to say I need I, an update on how that Chargers fans doing right now. Yeah. The plant. He's probably very excited. Oh, the plant. The yeah. Plant. Yeah. yeah. She's going crazy. She's nuts. She's crying. Um, I know that there's a lot of fake news, Twitter accounts, people reporting stuff like the weird football, you know, like football insider Twitter account or whatever. NFL rumors. NFL notifications did say we've been told that Jim Harbaugh had real interest in coaching Caleb Williams in Chicago. GM Ryan Poles decided to run it back with Matt Eberflus and Harbaugh ended up in L.A. Uh, I know this is probably fake, but it still hurts my feelings. I just want it on the record. It should. It it hurts my feelings. It should. I mean, imagine imagine Caleb and Harbaugh together. <sighs> Pretty good. Man. Man. All right. Anything else before we get to the games? Uh, the Falcons are interviewing everyone. Yeah, Vrabel and Belichick are going for the same head coaching job. And yeah, and Slowick. Uh I am our, my four year old son Chris and Blake are tracking Arthur Smith's Jets. Okay. And uh it's kind of a weird thing because they've also interviewed the defense coordinator for the for the uh, Panthers. But they flew out, they picked up Vrabel, flew him to Atlanta, and then they put him back on their jet and they flew him to his next interview oh. with Carolina. Well, that actually that actually makes sense because like no one wants a Carolina job. So they're like, yeah, fine. We'll you, treat you so well, like we don't care. You can go talk to them. It, yeah, you. It's actually like it's it, like it, dropping a hoe off at her next dick appointment. It's, <laughs> it's like here you go. I know you're not gonna stick up. You're not gonna stick with that guy. Yeah, right. It's it's uh it's seeing apartments and like a real estate agent will show you a really shitty one, and then they'll show you one that's like marginally bigger and like holy fuck, this is a lot of space. Yeah, you, like they they just they, that's all perspective. Like oh, yeah, no problem. Go. You can you can go. You can even put on a Panthers hat. You can go pretend to be on that team. You're not going to want to stay there. Yeah, I'm going to show you this penthouse, and then I'm going to take you in my Mercedes coupe that yeah. I drive for all the appointments. And I'm going to take you to the the worst slum in New York City. Yes. Go check this one out. Enjoy the cockroaches. Yeah, let us know how it goes. Yeah. Let us know when you want to come back for a second visit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not too worried about that. Uh, no one is, else is, is, is there, interviewing Belichick, though. Well, yeah, so we're going to have Schrager on, so we'll ask him, like, is there a chance Belichick doesn't get a job this year? I, uh, That'd be interesting. We're gonna have to ask him that. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into all that because that that will be very interesting if very. he doesn't get a job this year. Uh, okay, let's get into some games. Championship Sunday. I fucking love Championship Sunday so much. Just the idea of of teams punching their ticket to the Super Bowl. Uh, it is brought to you by our friends at Supercuts. Picks and preview segment. You want a free haircut after this year's big game? Well. If the big game's final score meets or beats 75 points, you could win a free haircut at Supercuts. They're running a deal. Why 75? Because Supercuts has been cutting America's hair since 1975, and 75 just so happens to be the highest ever score of the big game. Was that Eagles-Patriots? I feel like that was 75, right? 41-33. Yeah. 74. So what was it? Can we look up what the the actual game was? So we're looking for the over on the Supercuts. So 28 cut. to 30. No, Super cuts. 24, 28 to 62. Supercuts high score of 75 points for the chance to catch free cuts at Supercuts salons nationwide. Head to supercutshighscore.com to register, read the terms and conditions, and for eligibility. It had to have been one of the Cowboys blowouts, right? Or Find the 49ers. San Fran- oh, San-, San Francisco over San Diego. Yes. 49 ah. 26. Jerry Rice went off. Natron means business. January 95. Steve Young getting the monkey off his yep. back. Yeah. Okay. So head over right now to Supercuts, get your hair cut, and root for that on uh, the big game Sunday. 
75 points since they've been cutting hair since 1975. Head to supercutshighscore.com to register, read the terms and conditions, and for eligibility. This is just basically a free bet. So go check it out right now. Head to supercutshighscore.com to register. Okay, boys, championship Sunday. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to Baltimore. The first ever championship game in Baltimore in Ravens history, which is pretty crazy. A team that's won two Super Bowls in the last 25 years is hosting their first AFC championship game. Also the first time since 2017 that the AFC championship game won't be in Kansas City, which is just a wild thing to just think about. That It was five years in a row that it was just like, yep, they'll have the AFC championship game. How are we feeling about this game? I feel like the Ravens are the better team, but it's Patrick Mahomes. That's exactly what it comes down to. That's my analysis. It's, it's it's Patrick Mahomes versus the entire city of Baltimore right now. Correct. They're bringing back the legends. You're going to have Ed Reed there. You're going to have Ray Lewis there. Jonathan Ogden is going to be the captain. Michael Phelps is dropping off the game ball. Hell yes. You've got Stavi. Terrell St- yeah, Stavi, baby. Ronnie, you mean. Ronnie, 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 Ronnie from Dundalk is going to yep. be there. Uh, they're going to have uh, Terrell Suggs, who said that he's going back. Didn't Terrell Suggs also play for the Chiefs? Ooh, I think he might have. That, that might, was late. That might be songs. an all-time like. I can't believe this guy played for this team. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's going to be Baltimore against Patrick Mahomes, and Baltimore is a better team. Twenty nineteen Chiefs. Also twenty nineteen Cardinals. Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's basically the entire Ravens franchise against against uh, Patrick Mahomes because they're the better defense, they're the better overall offense. Yep. But they don't have Patrick. They they have the MVP. But they don't have Patrick Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. And it's, Hank, sorry to bring up Tom Brady here, but it does feel like that type of game where we could I, – I, in my heart of hearts, I do think the Ravens are the better team they're going to win on Sunday. But if we're sitting here on Sunday night and we're like, the Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl again, it's going to be very similar to a Tom Brady, like, how do they do it? Oh, yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, Tom Brady. Like, there's no explanation for it. It's just Patrick Mahomes somehow had the ball late and he was able to drive them down and win the game. And if you're a Ravens fan, that has to just be keeping you up at night. Because, again, I do think they all around, more rest, better. They're healthier. The Chiefs got a, a bunch of injuries in the, uh, you know, Joe Thune might not play, which is going to be huge in terms of pressure up the middle. Like, it doesn't matter, though, because it's Patrick Mahomes. And if he does play, that's a pretty significant injury for an offensive lineman to be dealing with. Yeah. He's got a strain, which means like partially strain torn pec. pec muscle, which you use a lot if you play offensive line, obviously. Uh, they also have Gay. Gay is hurt, hurt, not injured, but he's going to try to play. But it's like a stinger in his neck. It's a neck situation, which might impact him. And that's he's going to be a big factor because he's the spy. Yeah. So he's going to spy Lamar Jackson. And if... Which doesn't really work with Lamar Jackson. It doesn't, but it's good to it's good to have the spy there. You need to spy, and then uh, you need to like do a, a hybrid spy, and then just let him loose. Yeah, because it's if you if you spy Lamar Jackson, he will just stand there, and then when he wants to move, you're going to be like flat footed. Oh fuck, where am I going? How can I? You can't spy him. The only like, way he's so fast. You just need him. You right. would need a player that's as fast as Lamar to right. be the spy to counter Lamar. And as good a runner. But um, if if they have to go to a backup, I do think it's going to impact a little bit. It's, um, yeah, and it's, I, I think the Ravens are going to be able to run the ball. I think that's their key is because the, the Chiefs secondary is, is pretty damn good with Snead and McDuffie. Like, they've done a very good job. And I think maybe just run the ball down their throat. You saw the Bills have a little success with that. And then on the other side, you just have to hope that Patrick Mahomes doesn't just – he isn't just what he has been his whole career, which is the best quarterback in the world. Yeah. Because I, I, I do think the Ravens defense is going to give a lot more of a fight than we saw from the Bills or the Dolphins. And, like, I'm a little – we're a little skewed because you have to you have to play the game in your head. Like, we saw the Chiefs offense be broken for the majority of the regular season. Then they get to the playoffs, and it looks like they're fine because they played – is it because Patrick Mahomes is in the playoffs and he's like, we're just going to – I'm just going to elevate my game and elevate everyone around me? Or was it the Dolphins are really injured, the Bills are really injured? Could the Chiefs' offense still be slightly broken when they play a real defense? So they got – last week they got the MVS game. MVS played really well. Uh, I don't know if that's just who he is as a player now. I doubt it. I think that's as good as you can expect him to play. I feel like without him playing to that level, they're not going to be able to beat the Ravens. Yes. So it's like can you – can this guy catch lightning in a bottle? If you look at his hands, probably not. Yes. Also, the Ravens, we should note, because 
there are levels to this. The Ravens have played a lot of playoff teams this year. I think there's something like eight and one against playoff teams, and they've killed them all pretty much. Like they have, I think the Browns, that one loss is the Browns game. Remember where everything kind of got freaky and they were up 14? Uh, Steelers. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they're, they've lost to two. And yeah, they, that was also a game where they just, Ravens dropped everything. So that yeah. that's a possibility. They went to overtime against the Rams. That was a close one. Yeah, but they, they, they beat the Texans and made the playoff. They killed the Lions, who obviously are in the NFC Championship game. Uh, you know, they killed the 49ers. They killed the Dolphins. We'll see. I don't. I. I just Patrick Mahomes in the back of your head. Hypothetically, like obviously Patrick Mahomes, greatest quarterback to ever walk the earth. This no, we did not walk. say that. Get him as plus money in the in the playoffs. You I think just, we said on track. It, He's on track to be in the conversation Hank, with Tom. What? Brady. How does the conversation change hypothetically if they lose by ten plus? I'm not here to have hypothetical discussions about this, Hank. Well, Brady lost in the conference championship game. Patrick too, Mahomes right? is eight and three straight up in his career as an underdog. Um. Hank, to answer your question, uh, I Patrick Mahomes is not as good as Tom Brady yet. He's not. Like, there's no debate on ter- – like, if Patrick Mahomes retired tomorrow, there is no debate. It's the path that he's on that you have to at least admit. I have admitted that. Right. I like, just that's what that. it is. But, yeah, Tom Brady lost championship games. Not until he won three Super Bowls. You mean That's I, true. So, after he won three – he so, didn't lose a playoff game until he won three Super Bowls. He also didn't go to the playoffs his second year after winning one Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes just goes to AFC Championship And then what did he do the next two years? He won two Super Bowls. This would be the first back-to-back since then, right? Yeah, yeah. it would. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to go back-to-back. Yeah. I just... You have to admit that it's just... it. It is, like, repeating itself in terms of, like, this guy... You, there's... It's very rare that you can sit here like like we've been saying before he's, this game. He's, he's the prince in waiting, but he hasn't been crowned yet. Correct. And I feel like people Correct. are like, oh, well. But he, here's why he is on this path is because what we've just said for the last 10 minutes, the Ravens are the better team, but Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. So that's where – that's and, and, like, that's an actual argument to be made. I also am very excited to see uh, Steve Spagnuolo versus Lamar Jackson because it feels like they're, they can't blitz as much as the Texans – but Spagnola is one of the best defensive coordinators in the league, and it's going to be a great chess match. Chess matches all over the chess field. match on both sides too, because then you've got McDonald, Mike McDonald, the mm-hmm. coordinator for the Ravens, against Patrick Mahomes. Yes, chess matches ever against Andy Reid. Yeah, it's actually funny when you think about it. It's um, it's the it's the meme when the uh, the Marines or whatever Army guys are lined up, and there's one clown. Mm-hmm. So it's like Mike McDonald, Todd Munkin, John Harbaugh, Andy Reid, Steve Spagnola, Matt Nagy. Yeah. He's a clown. That's the one guy who doesn't fit in in those six coaches that are all incredible well, coaches. According to Mike Florio, the stoner that doesn't smoke weed, he thinks that Bienemy might be giving some advice, some consulting oh. to the Chiefs, and that's why the Chiefs' offense has improved. Oh, I like that. I actually just made that one that extra nugget up because I, I like imagining – a reason for the Chiefs offense to flip that Derek switch. Derek Bieniemy. But he was saying Florida was saying if they make the Super Bowl, they could bring Bieniemy in to be a consultant. I personally would just like to say I think that what's been happening, two things. One, Eric Bieniemy has been providing secrets behind the scenes to the Kansas City offense to improve them. And also Connor Stallions has been helping Harbaugh out after he had to be let go from Michigan. So he's helping mm. John Harbaugh and the Ravens' defense, especially, figure out the offensive signals. I could see it's a fan fiction bowl. Yeah, I could see John Harbaugh like hiring Connor Stallions to like come up with stuff, and then just not using any of their reports. Just being like, I I want to make sure that he's working for us and no one else. Or Jim Harbaugh probably told Connor Stallions, "Hey, go help my brother out. Go help him win another Super Bowl or get as far as they can." But also write down every fucking thing that happens to yes. the Ravens, yes. and then I'm bringing you with me to Los Angeles, and you're going to help me beat my brother next year. Yes, I like this. Is that legal for the enemy to work yeah. for two teams at once? Mm-hmm. Well, he's not. He's he under contract right he, now. With he the is. He is currently our offensive coordinator. Got it. So that's interesting. Yeah, it, it is interesting. Legal. I don't know. I I've just become kind of jaded to the fact that a bunch of shady dealings happen all the time that are kind of outside the scope of what is legal and what is not in the NFL. And so I feel like uh, if he really wanted to, if Andy Reid called, he would answer the phone. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, all right. Do you have a nerd nugget? Yes. For the Chiefs, quarterback Patrick Mahomes is 38 career playoff passing touchdowns are sixth most in NFL history. And if he throws three 
in this game, he would pass Peyton Manning and join the top five for most postseason passing touchdowns. It's crazy considering it still feels like Mahomes is so early in his career and he's already on the verge of passing Peyton Manning. Yes. For yeah. The playoffs. And he, for the go ahead. Well, Peyton Manning was a choker in the playoffs for a very long time. Well, he still won a few Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. but he remember he yeah. was a choker for a very long time until he won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. My, my Murd Nugget of the week is that Ray Lewis is going to be a legendary honoree of the mm. game in Baltimore yes. this week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the Ravens, with last week's win, they now have 17 playoff wins since 2000, most in the NFL for teams not named the Patriots. And you mentioned all the good teams they've beaten. Ten wins this season against teams with winning records, the most in any team in NFL history. That was a stat. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good stat. That's The Ravens have, like when we, when we talk frauds and everything, the Ravens have played very good competition, and they have beat right. and destroyed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Lions at Niners. Lions at Niners. Our boy Jared Goff cracked a few jokes oh, at the that podium. Was awesome. The reporter was like, you've got some very good players on Hold your on, team. Hold on, let's do it. Let's replay it. I'll, I'll be the reporter. Okay. Uh, you've got some really good players on your team. Thank you. Uh, n you know, maybe not the superstars that everyone knows, like the Niners. Okay, never mind. It was awesome. It was that good. was that was end scene. Just punked him. He it was a great delivery by him. To try to talk shit about his teammates like that. No, no, no. Jared's a good teammate. Jared's a good quarterback. I cannot root for the Niners this weekend, unfortunately. I, I am I'm rooting for George Kittle. You have to you have to be able to put aside your, your pre existing fandoms and be like, you know what? Detroit needs this. Detroit needs it. There's such a good story. Like, how can you root against Dan Campbell? Division rival. I've I've already been through this. I, I I'm not rooting against them. Like I'm not gonna be like, fuck Detroit, they made it to the Super Bowl, but I can't. I'm I, I told you, I've I'm I've reached my limit. But you would be happy if they made it to the Super I'd be happy for, for my friends who are Lions fans and Detroit Don and Super fan because we'd be buying them tickets to the Super Bowl. So I would be happy for them. Super Bowl week would be fun. And I, I don't I don't hate the Niners. I like the Niners. I think they're a great team. I think they're probably, you know, they're favored for a reason. The one thing that makes me a little bit nervous if you are betting on the Niners is we don't know what's going to happen to Debo. So, and their offense is so much. Debo Samuel has the impact on their offense like most quarterbacks have on their offense. 49ers are 12 and 1 straight up and 10 and 3 against the spread when Debo Samuel starts and finishes the game. They are 1 and 4 straight up and 0 and 5 against the spread when he doesn't. The 49ers record when Debo Samuel gets at least one target, hmm. when he gets at least one target, they're 44 and 13 straight up when he doesn't, they're 9 and 10 straight up. It's crazy. It is that that when we look back at that Packers Niners game, that is way more significant than the rain. And like how Brock Purdy looked is losing Debo Samuel. I know people will be like, well, that just proves the point that he's a system quarterback. Who cares? Debo Samuel's that good. He's that much of a game changer. If he's not playing, the Lions are as live as live could be. So after talking to Chris Long about like the two levels of quarterbacks that we can have, the elite conversation and the game manager, I just think that Purdy is an elite game manager. Yeah, that's a good one. And that's fine. That's that's lovely. That's a great – that's a wonderful thing to have for your team, especially if you have a really talented team with, like, five impact players on offense. If you have an elite game manager, guess what? The game is going – your game is great, and it will be managed really well. Yes. I do think the Lions are going to be able to run the ball uh, in this game. I want to see some man football out of Dan Campbell. I am nervous about uh, the Lions' secondary, especially if Debo Samuel plays – because uh, the way the Lions play defense, this is from my friends at Sports Info Solutions, uh, they play a lot of middle middle of the field open coverage, so cover zero, man, cover two, cover two. Brock Purdy is the best quarterback against that type of defense, and it makes sense. Dicing up guys going across the middle, like hitting guys with timing, all these things. Getting that, the ball to Kittle and then letting Kittle run for like 45 yards, running through motherfucker's face. Right, Christian McCaffrey coming out of the backfield, catching passes, so... Uh, it will be interesting to see, though, if the, the Niners, who are a very good running team, going up against the number one ru rush defense in the Lions, it feels like, not to be cliche, this game can be won in the trenches. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Old school football. Right. It's like it, if, the, if the Niners can run the ball and they can somehow stop the Lions from running the ball as effective as they've been all season. All season, it feels like the Niners have a huge, huge advantage. And if the reverse happens, it's game on, Lions. I'm concerned that Yushek isn't going to be geared up for this game because he's going to be on, he's going to be online gassing up his wife for whatever Taylor Swift wears to the Baltimore game. Simp of the year. Simp of the year. By the way, can you imagine loving your wife that much? How gay is that? I I, I uh, was on Pittsburgh radio this morning, and uh, the guys had a good idea. Taylor Swift should 
not go to the game this weekend because if she doesn't go to the game and they lose, she can be like, I was the, I was actually the lucky charm here. If they go to the game and win, it, she's going to be the big story in Vegas anyway. No one will kind of remember that she was not at the game in Baltimore. Yeah. Also, Balt- going from Bills fans to Baltimore fans, a little bit of a difference. Mm. Bills are, are, are crazy, but they're also lovable. Like they're and they welcome people. They welcome people with open arms. I don't feel like Baltimore fans do the same. I don't know if they would welcome people with open arms. I don't know if Buffalo. Well, Jason w- Kelsey was just partying with all. Of them. I don't. I don't think that bu- that Buffalo welcomed Taylor with open arms. I think they welcome. You have to take your shirt off to be welcomed with yeah. open arms in Buffalo, like Fitzpatrick. Unfortunately, Taylor thought that was beneath her to do that. Mm-hmm. So she and her hat off during the national anthem. Yeah, kept that on allegedly. 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 Well, Mincy reported it. Yeah, that Mince. That motherfucker doesn't miss either. Ben Mince has ears on the ground everywhere. But I I don't know. I feel like Baltimore... They got an edge. They got an edge. I like it. They got an edge to them for sure. But I don't know that... I don't think she's going to miss. I think she's going to be there. Okay. I'm just saying it it wouldn't be the dumbest thing to just skip this one. Because, like like I said, if they get to the Super Bowl, it's like, well, it's Taylor Swift's Super Bowl. Yeah. And if they lose, you can be like, you needed me at every game. The NFL definitely wants her there. Yes. It was like the most watched TV event ever. It's They absolutely want them there. Yeah. Um, Okay. Anything else from this game? I got something. Oh, yeah. Nerd Nugget. Do-do-do-do. Oh. Nerd Nugget of the week. Okay. On Sunday, the Detroit Lions are aiming for their first playoff win since 1957 when they beat the San Francisco 49ers. Yes. Detroit would then go on to beat the Cleveland Browns in the NFL championship game, who would then relocate in 1996 to become the Baltimore Ravens. Is this a sign the Lions will once again beat the Ravens in the Super Bowl? Mm. Yes. What about the Super Bowl logo stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. Super Bowl yeah. logo is Ravens and Chiefs. So for the past two years, the colors of the logo have corresponded pretty closely to the teams that end up making the Super Bowl. Um, I think that Every time I look at those logos, I just look at the old ones, and I'm like, those were so much better. Bring back the old Super Bowl logos that had, like, an identity that had personality to them. Yeah. They've been sanitized. Also, there's a bunch of red teams and a bunch of purple teams. It's also true. So What you do you just, mean? Like, they're saying it's 49ers Ravens. Teams. The Vikings? The Vikings. Oh, that one fell apart it. pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of red teams. Apart. Yeah. I believe in that shit. You think Roger Goodell before yeah, the season, he, he's like, I'm, you know yeah. what? I'm gonna. It's time to examine the logos for the Super Bowl. They'll never pick up on this. I'm going to make them the exact colors of the teams that are going to be in there. Will you yeah. admit that Patrick Mahomes is on the Tom Brady path if he beats the uh, Super Bowl logo thing? Yeah. Yeah, because that's big. That's significant. Mm-hmm. That's I'm just so, boat so, oh, are you taking the Ravens? I don't think I'm going to bet it. Because I've been so bad, and it would just be doubly painful. But I think the Ravens smoke them. How much? Actually, you know what? We'll ask Peter Schrager about this. But I always wonder, because Aaron Glenn and uh, ends. Ben Johnson are doing a bunch of interviews, how much that actually – it has to affect you a little bit. It's a shitty rule. I like, thought they it, used to not do that. Yeah, I know. You shouldn't like have – The Patriots coaches weren't allowed to interview, I, I remember, until after the Super Bowl. It's or weird... until the, the in-between week before the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. The the coordinators doing interviews right before the biggest games of their careers doesn't it doesn't feel right because you're you're basically taking an interview for the biggest job of your life and you have nerves you got to get prepared and it's that's has to take away hours from getting ready for the game. If I were a coach, I would and somebody was was interviewing me to see if I wanted to be a head coach somewhere. I'd be like, okay, so I didn't prepare for this interview at all because I'm laser focused on winning the NFC Championship game. Hired. And then as an owner, I'd be like, that motherfucker. Hired. Yeah, we want that guy. Yeah, I'm not even going to take this interview. If you want me, you can wait. Yeah. I care about my team so much. Yep. care about the guys. I've got one more thing on the Niners. Quarterback Brock Purdy is the fifth quarterback in NFL history to win a playoff game in each of his first two seasons. Uh, can you guys name the other four? Wait, say it again. A playoff fifth game quarterback in-, in NFL history to win a playoff game in each of his first two seasons. Mark Sanchez. Yep. Andrew Luck. Joe Flacco. No. Yep. Um, Tom yep. Brady. Not Brady. Oh, yeah, because this is his second season. Yeah. Flacco, uh, Big Ben, Mark Sanchez, and one more. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <sighs> Wait, Patrick Mahomes? Oh, right. Because he, he wasn't technically yeah. a, his first two seasons. What you, Russell what? Wilson. Oh, yeah. no, oh, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. I was Andrew Luck might have. I said that. Oh, you said that, yeah. yeah. 
He won his first year in that comeback against the uh, Chiefs. Oh no, no, they lost to the Chiefs, right? That's right. They had a big lead against the Chiefs. Yeah, I that was the forty-one to ten game. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like a crazy the first game. Saturday game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I had that flipped in my brain. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get to our interview with Peter Sugar. We're going to talk more ball. We're going to talk more conference championship preview. The games. He's got all the inside sources. Before we do that, PFT, you got a couple quick ads. Yeah, before we get to Peter Schrager, he's brought to you by Pardon My Cheesesteak. I love Pardon My Cheesesteak. What better game day meal than a cheesesteak? And big news, we've teamed up with Uber Eats to bring the flavor straight to your doorstep. Craving that Philly perfection? Well, no problem. Just hit up the Uber Eats app, scroll through our cheesesteak lineup, let the flavor journey begin. Whether you're vibing with a classic Philly cheesesteak or feeling adventurous with one of our signature creations, Part of my cheesesteak is just a few taps away. We're talking steak grilled to perfection, smothered in cheese that'll make you say, pardon me, this is heavenly. Heavenly. That's a good tagline. Pardon me, this is heavenly. So why wait? Open up the Uber Eats app, search for part of my cheesesteaks, get ready for a flavor touchdown right at your doorstep. Pardon us, but we're about to make your taste buds do a victory dance. I'm going to eat some cheesesteaks on, on Sunday for sure. Best game day meal in the world, cheesesteak. Get some fries, get some sodies. Order now on Uber Eats or PardonMyCheesesteak.com. Peter Schrager is also brought to you by the Farmer's Dog. Blake, just weighed him in. Up to 85 pounds now. All thanks to the Farmer's Dog and their very nutritious meals. He loves the Farmer's Dog. He starts drooling. He goes, he sits by his food dish when it's dinner time. He knows what time the Farmer's Dog comes out of the fridge. It's fresh. It's made to eat for dogs. And it's great. It's nutritious. Keeps him healthy. Keeps him active. Blake and Stella have both been on the Farmer's Dog, and they're doing great. They're thriving. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets. It's nutritionally balanced. It's made from real meat and veggies to satisfy the standards of human food. I would eat it. It looks good enough for a human to eat. It's the best option for dogs of all life stages because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's just real, healthy food. The Farmer's Dog just isn't fresh, higher-quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. It doesn't matter if your dog's young or old, it's always the right time to begin investing in their health. That means more healthy, happy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash PMT to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. And now, here's Peter Schrager. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest recurring guest in person it's peter schrager from good morning football also nfl network nfl network nfl network fox nfl kickoff we do the weekend show for fox so what does it feel like being uh just owned by the league yeah no it's 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 a burden (laughs) it's it's great i get all the uh i get i get to do the show on nfl network i get some of the perks in a lot of ways being behind the shield so people pick up my call when i call but yeah got to toe the line where appropriate are you you behind the shield are you protecting the shield? interesting i'm in the front lines yeah yeah, and you're the shield the tip of the spear. The tip of the spear. The tip of the spear of the shield. And and they tell you before the season starts who's going to be playing the Super Bowl, right? They lay it all out and they so say, just I, play along with this script. I <laughs> saw that your pick was the Chiefs and the Niners. That's interesting. Oh. Was. So uh, back in September, we have to make our picks. I have now had five straight years of picking the correct Super Bowl champion, and I take great pride and pat myself on the back for this. And uh, that included the Buccaneers run with Brady, the Rams run with Stafford. That's crazy. Yeah. And then this year I went and did a whole thing because I realized in our world, if you don't promote yourself, no one else will. And so I was like, well, they're certainly not talking about this on all the other shows. So right. I'm going to talk about it on our freaking show. So I did a whole thing and I basically said, and I just don't know how it happens. I don't know where it happens, but the Chiefs will win again because until Mahomes, I see him get knocked off his block. He's not losing and they're going to beat the Niners. And now it's kind of it. And now I'm in this jam because I'm watching this Ravens team and I'm yeah. super into them. And to break the fourth wall, my wife is from Baltimore. Her father is a diehard Ravens slash Colts fan. My wife's father has been to every Baltimore Super Bowl ever, including Super Bowl three. Holy shit. So he's like, was one he of in the, diner? <laughs> he was in diner. He yeah. was right across uh, from, from Barry Levinson while they were filming that. Yeah, um, you can pass the test. <laughs> he can pass yeah. the test. He knows all the stuff from the Colts teams from the 60s and 70s. So my son is seven years old, getting into sports, and he just loves Lamar Jackson, loves Baltimore. And it's one of those like heart versus mind versus my own career. Do I just ride with the Chiefs right now or do I say, 
screw it. I, you know, I'm going to root for the Ravens here because it's good for my family and I can actually go back for Thanksgiving. Well, so. it sounds like you've hedged yourself nicely, which we just finished doing. We were doing the preview and we we're like, Baltimore is the better team. Yes. Overall, better defense, like uh, offense that has looked better for the, the course of the season. But it's Patrick Mahomes. That's the thing. And that's it. And it's Patrick Mahomes. You're watching last week against Houston, and there was like five like false start penalties. There was a couple delay of games, and that was just a crowd. And already they've said who's going to be at this thing. Ed Reed and Ray Lewis are welcoming him in. Terrell Suggs will be there. Michael Phelps is going to be involved in some way. So like this is like the ultimate Baltimore love fest. They haven't had a home AFC championship game since 1971 in Baltimore. Like this place is going to be pandemonium. So everything on paper says it's going to be Ravens, and yet... It's Patrick, it's Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Don't forget so, about T Pain. T Pain and Yeah, there. yeah. So, so Fallout Boy last week. No, not Fallout Boy. I'm sorry. Our guys, uh, Jimmy Eat World last week. Yeah, yeah. they should get I was, Cisco back. <laughs> T Pain. Why not? All yeah. right. So I, I want to talk about the conference championship games, but we we had while we were doing the show, we had an interesting thought that you are you are so clued in. Uh, is there a chance Bill Belichick doesn't get a job this year? Yeah. What? Why? What's happening? Yeah, the only thing that was coming up was Atlanta. That was they met last week, right? We're we're recording this. It's Thursday. He already had a second interview with them. And if you're Bill Belichick or if you're the Falcons, I, I don't. You're not getting a third interview. Like, actually, let's go back and watch some of the stuff that you can you know sell yourself to us. That's you would know by now. It's crazy that he did a second interview. It's crazy to second interview. And I tweeted this last night on the X. Um, I took to X. Uh, 14 different coaches have interviewed for this Falcons job. Yeah. What? But 14 different ones and Belichick twice. So it's like, if it's not the Falcons, I don't have another team for him. Yeah. Here's a little nugget for you, though. To my knowledge, I think Belichick is the only one that got the vacation that took him to Antigua. That's it. All the other ones have taken place at the Falcons facility. He had a... But they took him, they, they wined and dined yes. him a little bit more. But what's going on? Like, what what is happening that he's not... Like, if you want him, you should have you do hired him. it's done. Right. And it's, you figure out the financials, and so, yes, you can bring McDaniels, and yes, you can bring everyone you want, and bring your whole band of characters, and we'll rebuild New England here. Um, it hasn't happened yet. So it's Arthur Blank. Arthur Blank has um, a son who I think is getting more involved as well. And then you've got Rich McKay, who's a longtime NFL guy. He was with Tampa for years, and then, of course, has been with Atlanta through and through. And then they also have Terry Fontenot, who's like a young, up-and-coming, really respected GM who they hired from the Saints a couple years ago. And to hear McKay and Fontenot are also in these interviews, or at least was in one of the interviews, is really interesting to me. Does Belichick gel with guys that he inherits? Like, he, of course, knows Rich McKay from years of being at the league, but it seems like that's an unorthodox situation, too, where Belichick's like, yeah, Terry Fontenot, guy in his 40s who has, you know, drafted players for the Saints in the, the glory years of the 2000. He's going to tell me who to pick. I'm curious the dynamic and so what the So that's what's are. the holdup is the front office. So if you had to put your money on it right now, who's going to be the coach of the Falcons? I don't know. You have no idea. I have no idea. Mike Vrabel? Potentially. Mike Vrabel, as we speak, is meeting with David Tepper and the Panthers. Well, right we were now. saying that that like the the if you go to the Falcons and you go to the Panthers, I don't think you have to be worried that he's going to go take the Panthers job. That has to be the least excited I job. disagree. Why? I like the Panthers. Why? I like the Panthers. Is, is David Tepper paying you? David Tepper will pay. Okay. Okay. First of all, that I guess he technically well, in is, a roundabout yeah, way. Can, yeah. I, can I do a little Tepper thing? And everyone could say, well, you know, of course you're from the league. You're going to talk positively about the owners. I don't think that's all the exactly owners, what we'll say. I don't think all this. the owners yep. do talk about Tepper. Yep. Um, all right. Do you know Tepper's career like a little yeah. bit? Just yeah. Like, yeah. So this was a guy who was like truly the renegade of Wall Street, and I kind of like that already. He worked at Goldman for years. And then, you know, after a bunch of years of being passed over, he's like, all right, I'm going to go start my own thing, Appaloosa. They have this great ride. The guy who kept on passing him over at Goldman ends up, I believe, getting a divorce, has to sell his Hamptons house. Mm -hmm. Tepper buys the Hamptons house and it just demolishes it. Yeah, and grudge. Okay. Nice. Grudge, yeah. yeah so, okay, yeah. so already we're kind of like, okay. seems well adjusted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Apparently, you walk into his office on Wall Street, the Appaloosa thing, you walk in and there's just two giant brass yeah, testicles. Yeah, again, well, well adjusted. Yeah. Well adjusted, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and yet he's had employees there for 30 years. And he's had... Un he pays well, probably. He's had remarkable... He's very good at blackmail. ...in yeah. Wall Street. Yeah. And then the other part of it is, like, he three different times in his career, because um, I had to do a whole, like, study on it, obviously. Uh, Black Friday, he was ahead of it, like, knew that was coming, whenever that was, in 87, or it was Black Monday, I'm sorry. It's Black, whatever it was, 87, he beat that one. Then in 08, with the housing market, he beat that one. And then on COVID, in, like, 
February of you know 2020, he's on CNBC being like, I'd get rid of all your hospitality stocks. I'd get rid of all your restaurant stocks. So wait, he... But, but he all of this is nothing to do with football. My point is, <laughs> this is a guy who has gone all in against the grain. I think it hasn't clicked yet with the football. And I would say, okay, I'll roll with that guy. And did he spill a drink on a fan from Jacksonville? Yeah, it was. I would say it was spill. It was, it, was not, it was not an accident. Bro was the word. Do we have any idea what was going on before that? I'm not defending David Tepper. For all right, doing so now that. I do think you're getting paid yeah, by David Tepper. I have nothing spill to do with it. Spill a drink. We don't know if the fan wanted <laughs> to have that drink. <laughs> I don't think he was. I don't think. <laughs> Whoops! Sorry for spilling so, this. So, at you. so what, you've, what you've told us is that like he's kind of a baby, and he sh- he has successfully uh, beaten the market, possibly through insider trading. Can't work with others. <laughs> yeah, can't yeah, work can't, with yeah, others. Yeah, like basically. Basically, has the his Wants people to win. his people skills are essentially I'll pay you money, and then you'll you'll stick with me. I I, I kind of like that he's against the grain. He's a voice. He's a new owner, and he's kind of a voice in these league meetings too. Where well, but but hold on, you know how this league works. When when all these guys and and women get together, and they see you know a guy who's trying to do it his way, and he keeps failing, they they like him. They want to keep him around. Dan Snyder stayed around for a long time. He was good for all the other guys because he's like, Jerry he's Jones, never going to be competitive. Jerry Jones loved Dan yeah. Snyder. That was his best friend so as I, far as owners go. Yeah, so you I don't him, take what the owners say. You they see him and they say, yes. oh gosh, they're the worst team in football. Keep them around. They, they're the worst team in football. They don't have their number one pick. And like the guy can't figure, he's, just, he's having meetings with Frank Reich like twice a week, which any football coach well, I think would they be like, a, what the fuck? I think they're doing a good search right now. Obviously, I, it, now I'm already in the bag, it sounds like. I'm just trying to do Yeah, yeah, you put yourself here. in a corner I'm here. now fighting out of it. I would say the Dan Morgan hire was unexpected because everyone figured he would just wipe everyone out. Morgan was there, so you're going to bring him in. They're probably going to bring someone else who can handle some of the salary cap stuff and also the contract negotiations. And then I think they're going to hire a coach that can work with Bryce Young. I don't think it's that horrible a job. I think Charlotte's a cool city to live in. I think there's there's opportunity, and I also think the NFC South is still wide open. Next year they could turn it around. The, the, the best argument you can make for David Tepper as an owner is because of his background and his makeup and everything that he's done in his life, he will reach a point where he gets so sick of losing that he'll be like, maybe I have to do it someone else's way. That's the best argument. I don't. I, I don't, don't think he, the, his way is currently working. But like a guy like that, they don't like losing, and they don't like being a joke. So he will eventually hit that threshold where he's like, "Okay, yeah, I probably should like listen to someone else." Yeah, and and I'll tell you, it's it's going to be an uphill battle, obviously, with no first round pick, and that hurts. And you could say, well, their salary cap's a mess and all that thing. I don't know. I kind of like guys who. It, Al Michaels calls games, right? And he, it's always like he's got like these. He's a little bit of a rascal. I feel like Tepper's a little bit of a rascal. Okay, now a like rascal. Rascal's, rascal's a great it's word. It's a great it's word. A and yeah. he's kind of like, all right, this is how I'm supposed to do things. I'm going to do it my way. And I, I think he wants to win so badly. And he's done it on Wall Street, which I think is as competitive as the NFL. And I understand that there's a lot of personal stuff. And you could say, well, it's more about teamwork and chemistry than just some renegade out there. I think he desperately wants to win. And I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell on David Tepper and the Panthers just yet. Okay. okay. Well, I, I think that with, with the character arc of a owner like this typically goes, you go in, you try to do it your way, you fail, then you say, I've learned my lessons, I'm now going to turn things over to football people that understand football. Sounds like they are. But then you, act, no, but step number two is you say all those things, but you still meddle behind the scenes. Then step number three, right. the third act is when you actually take your hands off. You're just like, all right, yeah. someone else can yeah. can run this show. Yeah. If you're variable, though, and you interview with the Falcons and your son is signed to the team, I feel like that makes it a little bit more attractive, right? Yeah, I feel like that has to be it. Uh, yeah. If it's offered, right? I think it's interesting, Vrabel, Belichick, both these guys, Pete Carroll hasn't even gotten an interview anywhere. It's like, I think everyone thought, well, if they're really going to still want to be coaching, all three of those guys would get first dibs in. I don't know if it's a changing of the guard in the NFL where a lot of these owners are like, I'd rather just do it my way and bring in a young guy and we can mold that thing together. Yeah. We got something that we want to fix on this show. It's the process of interviewing coordinators as they're still in the playoffs. Because it feels like it's broken. On one hand, you don't want to like spend all your time interviewing guys that you don't want to yeah. hire wait till those teams are bounced for the playoffs and now you can interview them. But at the same time, it's like they have a job. They've got the most important games of their life in some cases coming up that they they need to be prepared for. What is the solution to this? It's tough because last week, um, Ben Johnson, who is the hottest name you're wearing, obviously your, your Washington stuff. I think that's, mm-hmm. that's a good fit for I, them. I want that. I think you do. I, yeah. And I think he'd be great. Um, he interviewed for three different jobs via zoom on the Saturday before their game on Sunday. And you got to think, well, God, that's the perfect time for these last second adjustments and looking at it. 
But Dave Canales, his opponent, was also interviewing for the Carolina Panthers job the day before the same game. So it does seem like it's messed up. The The plan would be just you can't hire anybody till after Super Bowl and you got it. But then you're now you're, you're, you're knocking on the door with the combine, which is a week later, the mm-hmm. draft, which is already happening. So it's an imperfect science. Um, they've changed a lot of the rules for the better, I think, to give more opportunities to minority candidates. And the Rooney rule, of course, requires that. And now you also have things where you can't interview. Those guys can't be interviewing right now. If you're playing this weekend, you can't be interviewing this week before the conference championship game. So yeah. that is at least in place. But I, I, it's an imperfect science. And the worst situation is a guy spends the entire night before the game interviewing with some other team, and then they get blown out because of this. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and we definitely would blame that. Or if you're a coordinator for like a Super Bowl team, and then the day after the Super Bowl, if you lose, then you get hired in the same town that the Super Bowl was in. Mm-hmm. That would be like Jonathan Gannon. Yeah. That would be a strange yeah, look that too. Was strange. Yeah, they paid the price for it. I actually like what the Eagles are doing. I like I like Fangio. I like yeah. Fangio too. He's the best. Who would you guys want as the offensive coordinator? It literally is like, a, like an episode of The Bachelor. Uh, as a Commanders fan, I, I hope that they just bring Ron Rivera over there. <laughs> as just the like, offensive yeah, coordinator, offensive, like they did with they, Castillo. They, they, right they do like the Matt Patricia thing where it's like, okay, you know what? You know you know how to how to beat a defense because we've seen how you play. So I feel like as an offensive coordinator, you'd be really good. That's what, what I like to say. What's see. interesting is they have already a staff there, and not all those guys have been fired. Sirianni is an offensive coach. Gave up the play calling last year, so now you're in this weird deal. I know one coach, I'll even say Kingsbury uh, interviewed for them. He did it via Zoom. He said it was really good, and it was like interesting because I think a lot of these coaches are coming in, and it's like, all right, well, Nick's an offensive guy. Am I going to be able to run my offense? You guys give it? And apparently the Eagles are like, yeah, bring your offense and bring who you want with you, and let's see – what you can do and i think it's going to be a very attractive job because that all the skill position players and the offensive line is incredible is it though because i always wonder this uh like the bears and the eagles the, the, obviously different because the eagles went to the super bowl but if you're an offensive coordinator candidate and you're trying to get this job are you in the back of your head being like this guy is on the hot seat already that if it doesn't go well, we're all going to be looking for jobs again? Or does it not matter because, hey, there's only 32 of these jobs, you got to take whatever you can get? No, it's a great question. And in Eberflus's case, if you think he's a lame duck coach, and this is like the last year, and obviously Shane Waldron got the job, you'd also say, I'm also taking on either a rookie quarterback in Caleb, right. or I'm coming in with fields where I've got to kind of adjust to whatever whatever they're putting around him. Um the Eagles one is different though because you already have the fully built offensive right, line, right. and you have. Devontae I didn't mean Smith. to compare them. Yeah, and no, no, but it, it's a good point. And then the question is, did they hit such a low this year that no matter what, if you're the offensive coordinator, True. you're being praised? And it's like, okay, well they fixed the offense. You can't get worse than what it was. True. All right, so let's talk about the games this weekend. Uh, let's start with the AFC Championship game. You have people around the league. You talk to everyone. What is it about this Ravens defense that has been so special this year? Uh, we, we, we have the hypothesis that there are some franchises that it actually matters that like Ray Lewis and Ed Reed played there. Cause it seems like the Ravens just play with that edge. That's just like built into their like franchise. Like they have that edge. They have the dudes that are just like nasty and want to get after you. But what, when you talk to different offensive coordinators or coaches, what is it that gives them such an edge and they're making it so hard to score points on them? Yeah. It, I think. John Harbaugh had a really cool quote yesterday, and it's actually from Steve Smith, who said it years ago. He's talking about Roquan Smith, which I know it breaks your heart seeing. Yeah, no, he's a perfect Raven. It's like, and he said, he goes, that guy has been a Raven his whole career. He just didn't know it till he got here, (laughs) which is such a badass comment. And they've had guys like that, whether it be the C.J. Mosley types or the Terrell Suggs or even Haloti Nata. Those guys, they're like Ravens. That's just what they are, and I think they've got a bunch of them on this team. Um, You know, McCourty, who I work with, Jason McCourty, is a defensive defensive back for 13 years so I could talk to the offensive coordinators but I also talk to him every day for three hours what they do is they mix and match it's like you don't know what version of the off of the defense you're going to get so one day they're looking at you and it's one totally different look than it was the week before and they have kicked the shit out of so many good teams I in know. that building what they did to Detroit was real they beat them by something like 30 something and obviously they beat the Dolphins they beat the Seahawks when the Seahawks were the hottest team two seed in the NFC they blew them out and then they go up to to Santa Clara obviously into that and last week I, I I thought that it was going to be a closer game, especially at the half. It's 10-10, and then, then it was just too much. It was suffocating, and you're talking about all those false starts and all the all the way the crowd got into it. It felt like it was just an avalanche. But this guy, McDonald, if Ben Johnson isn't the coach of Washington, mm-hmm. I'd keep an eye on him also there because he's brilliant. And talking to him a little bit, I don't know him that well, but his story is cool. He was at UGA, 
And then he went uh, to the Ravens for a long time. And then Jim Harbaugh took him to Michigan, as you probably know. He was defensive coordinator there. And then John took him back. So he's got the college and the pro. And he's 37, smart, cool, and the players really connect with him. So like, I, I think what they do is they match up with everybody, and you can't really prepare for it because they do so many different things. What about Kansas City's defense? So Kansas City's defense much better than it has been in the past. Chris Jones will just fuck you up. He just has a few plays every game where he's yep. like, I'm going to fuck that guy up. And he does it, and it seems like it's impossible to stop it. They got some injuries. Um, are they going to be able to slow down Lamar at all? Yeah, I, I, that's the thing. I'm trying to envision a situation where Lamar is completely stilted, and there's been a three games where he's struggled. The Colts, which was like in the rain at home early on in the season, they hit a, they hit a wall in the second half against Cleveland in a game this season, and then they have one more loss to the Steelers early on, which was just weird. But for the last few months, like, Lamar's just rolling. So, Spags, all respect to him and what he does. Like, this is asking a lot from Nick Bolton and Willie Gay and Drew Tranquil, the linebackers, to try to make a, a way to stop this run game. Because I think it's coming. I think Lamar's going to be running a lot. Yeah, I think they're going to run a lot. So, another team that's going to probably try to run a lot. Well, actually, both the Niners and the Lions are going to run a lot. The Lions run, I know that you, you've you talked to all the people in the building. It's pretty incredible because you don't really see it in the NFL where it's like they zagged. They went with Dan Campbell, who was not – I think Chris Long put it perfectly when we had him on the show on Wednesday. All these owners are bubble boys where it's like if they sit down with a football guy through and through, it's like these two people in no other profession would have yeah. any conversation with each other. But they go with Dan Campbell. The rebuild happens. It looked bleak for a while last yeah. year. And now they're in the NFC Championship game. I mean, is it just like Dan Campbell, you can't say enough about what he's done for the culture of that team? It goes even above Campbell. So when they first, you know, were like, okay, we're firing Patricia. We're going to start anew. We're going to look at this thing. There was two big hires. One of them was Chris Spielman. Mm -hmm. All right. So Spielman, you think of Chris Spielman when we were kids. It was a bloody face, like just hardcore Lions linebacker. And then obviously played for Buffalo and Cleveland. He was working on Fox. He was like the third announcer on Fox. And the ownership group, they had him as the preseason analyst. They said, would you want to join in some capacity? Very nebulous job. But they're like, would you come back? And he left Fox, which is a pretty good job, pretty comfortable. You know, you're calling games 17 weeks out of the season. You're off the rest of it. And he joined Detroit, and he kind of advised a little bit on the coaching search. And they brought everybody in. They had Salah in there. They had Arthur Smith. They did the whole coaching search. And Dan Campbell came in, who Spielman had no relation to, and – you look at, they hired this other guy, Mike Disner, who was in Arizona. They hired these guys. They don't have any connection to Campbell. He was all about the right things. And it sounds a little cliche, a little corny when we talk about like grit and what that city's about. And it's a working class city. But like Campbell sold them. And we're yeah. like, we're going to build this thing from the ground up. And then every single decision they've made since then has worked. Aaron Glenn fits what they do. This Ben Johnson is is brilliant. They found him from Miami where Dan Campbell worked with him. And then the draft picks have all worked. This year's draft class is incredible. Yep. But beyond that, and I think Chris Long mentioned it on your podcast last week, they got three first-round picks on the offensive line. So mm -hmm. they're they're really good, really talented, but like culturally it's the right place. There are no divas in that building. We're going to get back to Peter Schrager in a second. He's being brought to you by Coors Light. Hanging with friends and family to watch the big game is the best, but as the game heats up, it can get intense. That's why Coors Light has that signature ice-cold refreshment to keep you feeling chill. For the big game, stock up on Coors Light and choose chill. I've been drinking Coors Lights. Beer's back, baby. It's beer season. Enjoying beers, drinking beers, buying beers, keeping beers outside, keeping the mountains blue. And guess what? You might even remember an iconic beer train that's known for spreading good vibes and Coors Lights to those who need it. After 12 years on hiatus, Coors Lights beer train is coming out of retirement for the big game. Talk about Hell cracking yeah. open an ice cold Coors Light and listening for the sweet sounds of Love Train. When it's time for refresh, you just open up a Coors Light. How great would that be if you're just you're chilling, you're thirsty, you're parched, you need an ice cold beer, and then boom, an ice cold beer train busts through your wall, delivering frosty, noble pilsners right to your brain. I love the Coors Light. One of the best commercials of all time. I would agree. Yes, people all over the world join hands and have a beer train. A beer train. There's only one beer out there for the chillest big game. That's Coors Light. Stock up or, getting Coors, or get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And now, here's more Peter Schrager. I think it worked because it was it was so closely tied with who Dan Campbell is as a person. You totally. Can, you can see, like, when any coach can come in and say, like, we're going to change the identity of this team to fit the city. 
And then the eyes are going to roll and be like, okay, yeah, yep. whatever. I've heard this before. I remember the uh, when Jurgen Klinsmann was the coach of the U.S. men's national team. He's like, we're going to play like America, which is we fight overseas. We're going to fight in your territory. And everyone's like, well, this isn't going to work. But, <laughs> but every every coach tries to do that, or a totally. lot of them, a lot of them do. Well, think they, about it. Campbell but, shows up but in with that, him. It's like it's real. That's his story. This yeah. is going to sound patronizing as like a minute, but he shows up like it's not a great looking suit. It's a blue button down. Mm-hmm. It's a striped tie. He's not trying to win any awards or go to the Milan fashion show. So like that starts it and everything he says, like he's true to it. So he lives and breathes it from way up to the ownership group. They live and breathe it. And again, they embrace the city and what they're about. And every one of their stories, whether it be Amon Ross St. Brown having 16 wide receivers taken before him, whether it be Gibbs, everyone rolling his eye, rolling their eyes when they take a you know a running back for an whether it be Goff, who obviously was discarded and kind of told like we're better off without you. I think they all fit that kind of mantra. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. We we do this challenge with every guest. Uh, say something nice about Jared Goff without qualifying it at all. <laughs> Jared Goff's got edge this year. Oh, yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, that's, that's say kind what you of want. A qualifier because this, this year, year, yeah, 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 this year. I know what you're gonna say, but no, um, he is he is like okay. Everyone talks about Brock Purdy being the guy that anytime you pay a compliment to him, there's always a but it's also in the system type thing. Jared Goff is kind of that too this year, where people every nice thing that someone said about Jared Goff, they're like they add on like. When they do play action right. at the end of it yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared Goff, I think, is just playing good football this year. He's just a good football player. And they had one bad game on Thanksgiving, and the story the next day was like, well, Hendon Hooker is being activated you know, right. from injury list. Like, maybe it's time we start considering. Like, that's how short the leash is with fans with Jared Goff. The stat was crazy. I think there's been like a very limited group of quarterbacks who have played in the Super Bowl for two different teams. It might be like Brady, Warner, and a couple other guys. Yeah, it was, no, it was, uh, it was like five guys who played in the championship game with two different teams. Yeah. It was Brady, Warner, Brett Favre, and Peyton Manning. And then, I think and then Jared Goff. I think there might be, yeah, and yeah. I think there might be mm-hmm. like four of them, I guess, if you want to get rid of uh, one of them who, who's been in the Super Bowl. He's a game away. So that's legit. But the edge thing is interesting because he's always been the nice guy taking the high road and you know, this Northern California vibe and the Rams, he was on hard knocks like three different times. And, yeah. at, and at no point were we like, that's a cool, you know, that's a guy that that's the man, you know, it's always like nice guy. All right. Who else is on the team? Cause that's, that seems like he's just kind of steady Eddie this year, uh, the Amazon post game show, I guess, or in the pregame, someone, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, it was said, Fitzpatrick. We, we, we busted him up for that. You hit yeah, him, right? Yeah, but yeah. like for him to come back and I guess like one of their PR guys, like whispered in his ear, like before the game, they called you a poor man's Matt Ryan. Like he like stopped the show and was like, "Wait, so you said I was a poor man's Matt Ryan?" And then yesterday they were they were asking one of the locals was like um, in his press thing like, "So you know you're not really household names this team." And you look yeah. at the night, and he's like, "Stop it right there." Yeah, like, Amon Ross St. Brown's a first team All Pro. Penny Sewell's a first team All Pro. Like, stop. Yeah, so, they're there. I mean, it, it really is to me what Jared has done this year, and you can count last year as well. He's never going to be the most vocal guy. He's never going to be like a crazy you know press conferences and clips. I think it's just his story fits in so perfectly with Detroit's story that he becomes such a great leader, just a, you could say quiet leader, but it feels like that whole team just rides with him because he was discarded, and it was like, oh, well, he's a bridge quarterback for the Lions, and then he's been playing so well. It's like, no, wait, he's really good. Yeah, and the rubber's going to hit the road this offseason, so he's going into the final year of his contract next year, and it's like Detroit can talk how much they love Jared, and Jared's our guy. Are you going to pay him forty five million? Sure. And, and we'll see. I think they should. I think you should pay him more. Yeah, and Don't give laugh. some of us. So he can give if us. He, some if of he it. chooses to do that, but I think they should. He pay has him. the option. He can. They give should us. pay him enough money where he has money that he would want to give to us. To totally. His friends. Yeah. yeah. All right. So so the Niners. Uh, it feels like the Niners have been building. You know, last year they were building to this moment. The entire roster is just loaded with dudes. Uh, what, like, in terms of, I don't want to say legacy, but, like, this is a very important game for mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan because I think he's one of the best coaches in the NFL. But at some point, you got to start winning some big, big games and get to the Super Bowl. And, you know, he's been to one, but, like, how, how what's the vibe with the Niners in terms of, like, window and, and this year and, like, it's all in, they got to win it. I think they felt good all season long. And, and, you know, last week was really hairy at points. And then Purdy has an awesome drive to end it. Like, just takes him right down the field. And I think that not only, you know, bailed out all those Niners, but I think it was a nice sigh of relief. And I think this week they're going to come with a much different game plan. Debo Samuel is huge, though. If he's not He's everything. He is such an important piece to that. But I'll say this, that Jawan Jennings, 15, they call him third in Jawan. He's been like, oh, that's, like good, that. that's good. He's awesome. And he Peter's made, always got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Drop a little one. Yeah. But like they call him, and he's the dude that like, 
wants to fight in practice. He's the guy that like the defense is like, Ugh, you could do like relax. Like we understand. He's like you're Rudy, great. Like he's that guy, and I think you're gonna see him have a huge role in this game. And I was shocked watching Purdy on that last drive because it's it's number fifteen, Jawan Jen, and then you get he's hitting. You know, I didn't even know Chris Connolly was on the team. Yeah. I know all these like that. Purdy had to rise above, and Purdy was really really good on that final drive. I it just. Talking to other coaches, and I know that sounds like I'm just bailing it out here. It's like what they do with McCaffrey is so unique, and mm-hmm. that if Kyle needs to, it has a whole week to prepare for this thing. You will see stuff that you have not seen all season, yeah. and they will use McCaffrey. They're just so freaking tough inside. I know. What about their defense? Their defense uh, has a lot of dudes on it for sure. They've been good. They've been a really good defense, but I feel like they're they're a little bit susceptible to running the football. They are because they play they play with the lead so often that you can tell Bosa pin your ears back. Quarterback's going to drop back. Go sack him. You say that's Chase Young too. Yeah. But when they have to play from behind, it, it feels like it's a different game, and they're not as stout against the run as you would like them to be. That's good analysis. I mean, that's right. Great Thank analysis. You. Thank you. Like Aaron Jones. You don't have to answer. I just I just want to get yeah. that. That off was my good. Chest. It sounded yeah. really good too. Uh, like Aaron Jones last week, um, they had a game plan. They're like, we're gonna go him outside. We're gonna run Aaron Jones, and he ran. He ate. Like he had a great game. Uh, and at the end of the day, that obviously Love throws that interception, but they were in striking distance. I think Detroit's going to be able to move the ball on them as well. Um, they're very underrated on the back end. I think Lenore's very good. Traverius Ward's very good. And then those three linebackers that they have, they're among the best in the league. So between Greenlaw and Warner, like they, they have dudes behind just that defensive line. How are yeah. you feeling about Ambry Thomas? Not a great game from Ambry, no. from old Ambry last week. Yeah. It also hurts that he's a name that you can r- remember. Like remember. Yeah, before yeah. the snap, you could see Love was like, Ambry? Yeah, Eyes it, get big? Yeah. If he was like Ben Thomas yeah. or like Joe Steve Williams. Thomas, yeah, you'd be like, no, wait, oh yeah, that guy. Ambry, though, you're like, yeah. Ambry. Ambry's a Go concern for him. me. I'm circling that. him on the Number fan. 20. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a – look, not – was not a good day for him yesterday, and you'd like to think that he can redeem himself. They used to forever have, like, Jaquaski Tart and Jimmy Ward, and those were the guys mm-hmm. in the middle. They quietly transitioned off of those guys. They've got all these young guys now, so they're going to have to step up. All right, so you're so plugged in. Uh, allow me 60 seconds to ask you a Bears question. Yeah. Uh, is it Caleb Williams? And I I saw Mel Kuyper said that the Bears could get a first-round pick for Justin Fields. I don't believe that, so I would like you to tell me that actually is true, and I'm dumb. I, I think it could be either a, a first-round pick or a second-round pick. But I'm, if you're talking about first-round pick for just – if you're talking about a team that needs a quarterback, like what team is giving up a top 10 or top 15 Falcons. pick? Falcons. That's the eighth pick? Okay. Are they giving up the eighth overall pick? I don't know. That seems like a pretty steep price for a quarterback who's going to have to be – I don't know. That seems contract. like a great deal. <laughs> seems like a great deal. But the, the contract is real, too, so you're going to have to extend them. Like you're, right. not, you're not bringing them in for a one-year deal. So it's deal. not going to be a first-round pick. Mel Kuyper was just getting so. me hyped up. Is it going to be Caleb Williams, though? You know, the fact that they interviewed Kingsbury was interesting, so I thought immediately, like, oh, they're going to want to bring him in there. But, like, they might have just been asking about Caleb a little getting bit. Intel. Yeah. Yeah. Getting intel. Yeah. Because they oh. ended up going with Shane Waldron. I have I have no um, – financially, we, you talked about it for six months. It makes a lot of sense to right. just drop Caleb and say, let's start and reset it. But they've not made any indications that that's the case yet. Mm. It, it, this is what we need. We also through, need this. Yeah, like, the draft goes through this podcast. Totally. We got the do. one, two, like, and three pick If they here. told us what they were doing in January, it would screw us for the next three it months. Is, yeah, smoke screens everywhere yeah. right now. I saw Mel Kuyper said that Jaden Daniels was, was going to go number two. My theory on that is that Kuyper likes to update his mock drafts. Yeah, yeah. So he always he wants to have some room to move a guy. So in like two weeks, he'll be like, you know what? Now I'm feeling more Drake May. Now that Ben Johnson, the head coach, they get an entire UNC quarterback room. Ben Johnson, breaking news: Drake May, Sam Howell, Kuyper, mock draft, two point two point oh. That's how we go. Yeah. We, That's all, we all lose our brain. Yeah, Wait, but if you were, it, it seems to me like Jane Daniels is a more intriguing prospect. Yeah, right, because we saw his explosive play. Well, who do you, just seeing Kyle, you watch? Kyle, who would you rather have between the two right now? I don't. I don't watch enough Drake May. I've yeah. only seen like three games of his, and he looks good. But when I watch Jaden Daniels, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of like Lamar when he was in college. Totally. He has that factor where you watch it and you see things that you've never seen a quarterback do before. I think. So, like, I'm, but I'm also dumb and I want to chase that high. Of course. But maybe just having a good quarterback like Drake May is a better idea. I don't know. That's a great analysis, also. It's perfect because you're right. It's, you know, Drake May, there is a, there's a prototype. All right, that's him. He's a great quarterback. Everyone likes him. I would almost say, like, Justin Herbert's the ceiling for him. Like, that's mm-hmm. what they say. Like, just big, statuesque, can throw the ball, great kid, leader, the whole thing. Jaden Daniels, though, is a complete wild card in that this guy could be a sensation. Yeah. You know, and could be that guy. And in the Heisman season, he was that. Uh, early on in this thing, this is before he won the Heisman, I had a GM of another team call me and be like, why is everyone saying it's May versus Wilson? It's actually May, Wilson, and Daniels. Like, he's that good, too. 
And the fourth name in, which I think is not getting any buzz right now, but will climb. I think JJ McCarthy is going to get a lot of buzz uh, as like I don't know. Here's your here's your Mac Jones type uh, of like this guy wins games. He's that's a leader, not whoa, whoa, whoa. throw him in. Whoa, but, but in the whoa. draft process, okay, that, was, right. that was the Mac Jones thing right. in a loaded draft class. It was like yeah, but if you draft Mac Jones, like you're getting a winner. You're getting a guy that's uh, a leader now. Whether yeah, or not that worked out, I don't know. He is really good at handing the ball out. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Crisp, clean pocket handoff get it. from JJ. I think JJ Mc- McCarthy could be a good pro. I just don't. You would not put It'd him be in that crazy to do a top ten pick on the him. big conspiracy. It's a big question. The big conspiracy or the big outside the box thing is you know Harbaugh just took the Chargers job. And yeah, everyone, everyone loves it. Him and Herbert's going to be great. That he ships off Herbert and he drafts JJ McCarthy with that Ooh. with that sixth pick. And that's Be- the best that's quarterback the, in Michigan history. That's what he said. Yeah, know, pretty good. Pretty good quarterback. He could get, he could trade the 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 Herbert to the Bears for the first pick. Give the Bears the sixth pick. Yeah, that works. Yeah, you'll take that, right? You take JJ McCarthy one. Yeah. What about the Patriots? Hank's Patriots. He doesn't understand how the draft works. He doesn't understand trades and all that stuff. But he is picking third right now. So he, he thought that he could that, that he could trade up to the first pick. But also keep the third pick. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's Not, tough. Doesn't, go on, Hank. You could. In, in well, hypothetically, you could. I mean, the I Texans guess you did could. A, they didn't. The, the Patriots don't have two first rounders. The Texans did trade up for get the two and the three last year. Yeah, anything's possible, and yeah. we don't have a GM yet, so we have no idea. Yeah, true. What, what would you say they need the most if they're drafting quarterback? Yeah, yeah. But if it was Belichick, who knows? You, you end up taking a corner or a guard, and you say, okay, yeah. well, he knows better than we do. Yeah. But trade, now I think you go quarterback. You trade back all your picks and draft like five offensive yeah, linemen in the fifth beef round. Beef it up. North yeah. Dakota State. That's yeah. it. What we yeah. showed them. It's, it's going to be interesting because there's a good high percentage chance that the three of us all have three new quarterbacks going it's actually next cool. year. Yeah. That's the top great. three and picks. And all of our but history it, is going to be It will destroy the podcast Correct. because two of us will have shitty quarterbacks. What was the analogy you guys made? Like a Russian roulette? Yeah, it's like, a Mexican standoff. Yeah. Because we're just going to be spending the next five years being like, no, my guy's good. No, yeah. you should have taken that guy. It and might actually gonna, be bad for the podcast yeah. Yeah. for the future of it. Yeah, because yeah. if one of them ends up being like Super Bowl worthy and the other two suck, there will be heavy resentment. Yeah. But isn't I'll that, just say it right now. Well, if, you're, if, you, if yours is really good, if the Bears win the Super Bowl, then it's a little different because it's, it's the one you took you, one. Yeah, you guys didn't have a choice. But, but the Bears, if, if the Bears have never passed over a great quarterback to take right, back. No, stop. So, but if, not if in recent history, if no. like if if PFT takes, if it goes Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, then then Hank gets Drake May, and Drake May turns out to be the best of the three. Hank's it will be well. I'll hate him for life. Yeah, Hank's and fired. Hank yeah. hasn't had any great years of football. Yeah. As, a, as a as an adult, so it's yeah. Um, Hank deserves this actually. Yeah, he's he's like he's Detroit personified. Yeah, <laughs> it's been tough from the what last. What do you got, Chief? You got breaking news. Who we got? Who Get we in got? Here. I don't my phone up. Read it. Read a it. surprise: the Panthers are closing in on a deal to hire Bucks OC D- Dave Canales as their new head coach. Let me give you some Canales if you can. Okay, yeah, yeah. give us some Canales. All right. How about he's, some, a, he's already he's already on the hot seat. How about some David Tepper? Canales. Some Canales. Yeah. Okay, some Canales. Let's 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 trademark that. Uh, was in Seattle for years. Passed over a bunch of times for that OC job. Was like the quarterback coach, whatever. And then he was Geno Smith's quarterbacks coach that year. But he did spend a ton of time with Dan Morgan in Seattle. Dan Morgan was this, was in the the front office. He was the quarterbacks coach. Goes to 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 Tampa this year, and everyone's like, "All right, throwaway season, whatever." Juice, like ton of juice. You know, one of those guys. I think a lot of scripture in his life. Also, a lot of like pep talks for the guys in the locker room. He is beloved in Tampa, and Baker like soared. Obviously, this was like an outside the box interview. I heard he crushed it in Carolina, and was great. And it, I, I love. Has this. anyone like, not crushed an interview? Fair point. I mean, you hear you do. You don't hear often like that. This guy, but for them this to bring in a second sucked. interview. But uh, Canales was not the lead dog in that in that room. Like going into this thing, of course, Ben Johnson, and you would think Bobby Slowick and all these other guys. But all along, like they wanted to go young offensive to get Bryce Young, like that guy. And what Canales did with Mayfield was tremendous. He so. played football at Azusa Pacific. Let's go. Oh. Let's Christian go. Christian Okoye went there. Yes, he did. So yeah. he, he's being brought in to save Bryce Young. Yes. And it, he will be judged specifically on how Bryce Young does as a quarterback. Yes. He has a long relationship with Tony Dungy as well. Oh, uh, okay. The two of them are very tight. I've been told that that's There's a, a that, scripture. There's yep. your scripture. Um, and... But just like a ray of light in, in in that building in Tampa this year, where everyone thought they were going to suck and they were going to be, he was like, "No, guys, we're good. Like we have this." And people, they, they, he was really well liked in the building, and I think that's a good fit. All so right, I'm gonna give it a C plus. What happens with Baker next year? I think he's back. You I think, think he gets a huge he payday. To, yeah, they, they end up breaking the bank for him. They're like, "You've proven enough this year." I think so. Yeah. I, I hope that happens. So I, yeah. I feel like they ran him out of Dude, town. Dude, Baker was great last week. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, he's been good this season, and great. I I don't know if there's a a team that 
fits Baker as much as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers it's do. It's fun. Yeah. It seems like a, a good spot. A good place, yeah. good city. Yeah. Um, all right, I got a couple, wrapping up, I got a couple non-football questions. First is uh, your show, Good Morning Football. What's the worst part about doing it? The worst part consistently is that 4.30. That's crazy. Time. I just wanted you to say 4.30. So it does just... not ever get fun. Yeah, what time do you go to bed? It's really hard because there's games on Thursday, Sunday, yeah. Monday. So a lot of times what I'll do for those late games during the season, I'll watch the first half, go to sleep, and it's like you know the old like Seinfeld episode. Like, don't tell me what happened. I'll wake up first thing. No one else is awake in the world. I don't check Twitter and the NFL on their website. NFL Plus has like the condensed game, and I'll watch the second half, and then I'll read all the articles from 4.30 ah. to 5. Are you able to go to the NFL website without seeing the score out of like the yes. corner of your eye? Do yes. you know where they put the scores? I purposely go away? out of my way. I've got a whole process. I oh, like wow. to have fresh analysis. It's also fun to wake up to. Um, but most nights when it's not a game night, it's like – I put my my son to bed at eight, and I'm in bed by nine. It's it's got to feel good though. The reverse being done with your day at ten a.m. Done, bro. Yeah, done. That's mm. incredible. What done. about on weekends? Has the early wake up affected your weekends now, yeah. where you get up so, at like five? So this is sounds sick, but I work for Fox on the weekends. That's in L.A., so I take the first flight out on Saturday morning. So yeah, that I'm is at, sick. I'm up at five any every morning anyway on Saturday, and then you're do, sick, fuck. And then on Sunday. It's 4.30 wake up Pacific time because we do the pregame show. Yeah, you're there. sick so fuck. You're throughout Peter the season, Schrager, sick fuck. Yes, colon, sick fuck. Um, <laughs> but it's 4.30 a.m. wake up throughout the football season, so you can imagine. What the honestly, hell? Honestly, though, you and I talk offline, and I'm not trying to – but, like, I watch you. I'm like, all right, you're looking good these days. You put on the weight. You're looking good these days. Put on. For me, it's like I will put on 20 pounds no matter what during the football season. And I tell myself mentally, like, this is the year that it's not going to happen. Like, you just can't avoid it when you're flying it's and, you're, bad. and you're watching football at those hours. And well, it's just hard. that was the other question I had for you, not football related. So uh, the thing I love about you, Peter, is like you're – and don't take this the wrong way. A little nerdy, but you you embrace it, which I love. Yeah. Like I think that that's self aware. Yeah, I would it say. makes it, it it makes it fun. Like if you get excited about football, that's a fun thing. I get excited listening to someone like you who's excited about football. Um, and you know, you're a good looking guy. You're you're an average guy. Oh, you're average. where good looking average guy. Oh, nice. You're an average guy. We're we're all average guys. I'll we're not it. like showstoppers, right? We're yeah, not yeah. shows. We're not Kyle Brands. Uh, the Aloe sneakers, though. What do you think? That's a hot guy brand. You think? I don't think that they, I would be allowed in an aloe. If you've seen an aloe, it's like... It's quiet luxury. Yeah, right? it's like... It's all like Lululemon the, on all steroids. The, all the people who go in there are the hottest people in the world. What are you trying to do? Can I tell you? Come I, back to us, dude. We're just regular guys. For ye Okay, well, I always find it cheesy when the white guy's wearing like the cool Jordans, and yeah. I cringe so hard. Yeah. Aloe as a brand, I can't. I mean, I'm not an ambassador for Aloe. Aloe is like if you're not if you're like athleisure, but like high end athleisure. Do, right? they, do they let you in? So here's the deal: they had sneakers. I was in LA and I go to the store and I have never seen the Aloe sneakers. So I'm like, I'm gonna get it before it becomes a thing. Okay. So I've never seen anyone else wear these as sneakers. I can't wear like I'm not wearing the juicy couture pants that they sell. Right. But I've got these sneakers. I just want to make sure that like you gotta. No, trust me, I'm man of the people. Okay. All right. Because I see Aloe and I'm just like, that's hot guy people. Like, no, they, like the hot. Hottest women, the hottest men, they go to Aloe, they do their fucking sauna and their cold tub, and they're like, this is totally. how I'm hot. Totally. That's, a, that's a hot guy jacket and a hot guy shirt, too. What, yeah, what are you trying to be that? a hot guy? <laughs> what <laughs> the <laughs> fuck is going on hot here? Guy, hot guy, hot guy. Calligraphy on the shirt? Yeah, yeah I don't know, guys. You're trying, trying to be a hot guy. I'm trying to be a you hot You got to remember your sick fuck. But let me tell you about the 1971 AFC Championship game <laughs> at Old Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Can I change the topic? Yeah. Uh, give, us, give us your analysis for the games. Tell us what the score is going to be for each game. Okay. Get I think, you back to the numbers. I actually think Chiefs Ravens is a low scoring game. It's not. It's, okay. I think it's in the 20s. Uh, I think it comes down to the end. Total? No, no, no. I think it's like, it's like <laughs> 23 crazy. 20. 13, 20. I think seven, it's yeah. tense as shit. I think it's an amazing scene in Baltimore. I picked the Chiefs before the season. I am going to continue to roll with the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs win, and we're getting one more week of Mahomes and Taylor Swift and the whole thing. The other game, I think San Francisco rolls. Oh, oh rolls. rolls. All right. What so, about the point total for uh, San Francisco and Detroit? Yeah, I'm that thinking, one I think is more points. I'm, toy, I'm toying with taking the over in that game. Yes. I'm toying with it. As an, an NFL employee, I do not engage in such specific talk of okay. numbers and whatnot, okay. but I will say I would expect... We well, can predict the, the score of the game, right? I, we do on the show. You're right. So I'm going to say It's this. smart of you that you keep yourself out of it because the NFL does not do any advertisement with gambling companies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's more like 34-21 than it is like a okay. field Okay, that would be the over. Yeah. Uh, okay, my last question. 
throwback question, rhoback.com. Yeah. Promo code take 20% off first purchase, Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers. I'm wearing the joggers right now, the most comfortable clothes in the world. Roback.com. You don't have to be a hot guy to wear uh, Roback like aloe and what Schrager's trying to do right now. Promo code take, go right now, roback.com, 20% off. Uh, okay, my last question. What is something that's going to happen between now and the draft that's going to shock us? Ooh. Is it a, a, a job, a hire, a quarterback getting traded? Could there be a quarterback getting traded? This is good questions. I think one of these, I think one of these star wide receivers will be traded. Oh, I teams. like that. And I, I'm saying that like, but like when you a look digs, across the league, a uh, digs and AJ Brown might not be traded, but like those type of players that are like, these are guys that are for years we built around the wide receiver. Now it seems like we're building around the tight ends a little bit more in the running games. I think there might be another big wide receiver trade. I'm trying to go through like, I don't know if a Keenan Allen is a big name, but like there's going to yeah. be a big name. At Cooper Cup now is the number two to Puka Nakua. Is he traded? I, actually, McVay loves him though. That's yeah, probably yeah. I think Stafford loves him. But like, I think we get one of those big veteran trades. Last year's offseason like was that. crazy with Aaron Rodgers and Lamar Jackson going through his contract stuff. I don't know if we can top it as far as hysteria goes, but I will say this: with Chicago, with the Patriots, with Washington, and with the Giants at the top of the draft, like you have four mega fan bases like monster fan bases i think draft season this year is going to be awesome with great quarterbacks and wide receivers oh i did have one more question that you just brought up fan bases what fan base gives you the most shit because i know on like we 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 deal with it if you talk about everyone in no, the league there's one fan base that always feels like they've been slighted or we don't talk about them enough what's the one that is always up it's actually ass? it's 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 i've tried to like so many times address them and be like guys i'm not i don't dislike like i don't i didn't pick the dolphins to make the playoffs this year oh and yeah a sensitivity fans, around yep. Tua. i never yep. include Tua in my top list and you know even seeing the name Tua starts off but like at the end of the season they lose the way they lost in kansas city where it was barely a fight and you're like well they were injured and all this stuff and i'm like for all the shit i took all year about not having the dolphins in the playoffs they lost in the first round as a 60 like i i don't know what to say like i got it wrong great they made the playoffs but dolphins fans um, it's love hate because I, I do appreciate Mike McDaniel and I do give them a lot of love at times, but I didn't put them in the playoffs this year and I heard about it all season. Yeah. Do you ever split it up with the with, with everyone on the show? Like, all right, you're going to do the, no, bills. That's, and like, it, we oh, should. Yeah, you should. Last like, week, Kyle did this like real piss and vinegar thing for the Buffalo bills. And I did one for the Kansas city chiefs and that felt like it balanced. Um, but I, we're pretty authentic in that. Like, we don't just like, all right, this is good for the show. Why don't you do Cowboys and I'll do that, like, right, right. how it goes. Right. Yeah. And right now it's on site in Kansas city for Hank. They don't like Hank. Yeah. Which was for us. We were yeah. actually banned from the we're city of Kansas city, city we, for a little bit. There. Why? Honestly, I don't we, know. We didn't respect uh, Patrick we, Mahomes enough, be, but we, I, I, we, everything that we said on the show, we always preface with Patrick Mahomes is the greatest quarterback in the NFL. One of the two greatest quarterbacks of all time. Okay. But, and then we talk about the Chiefs. It's, it's also a weird dynamic where it's like, we are very effusive with our praise for Patrick Mahomes because he is the best quarterback, but I get it. It's football fandom. Nothing makes sense. If you're a diehard fan, they don't like that. We like Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah, that's really what it comes down to. It's, oh, and yeah. we glaze. Yeah, yeah, we. That's do. the term always. Why are they always glazing? Yeah, we're glazing. We're we're, we're on that dick so all we, the time. We, we've been to, <laughs> well. No, it wouldn't be. It would be. We're like, um, they're right off our dick. If we're glazing them, right? No, aren't we sucking their dick? If oh, we're glazing them? Are we getting glazed by the Bills? Or are we Bills glazers? No, we're Bills glazers. So we're, but are we sucking their dick? No, but that wouldn't be. a... Oh, wait, are you talking about the glaze? Peter's, the, Peter's like, what the fuck? I work no, for this is interesting. Network. What's the Homer Simpson no, meme? Just like the the is right about the fundamental no, definition no, of glazing. No, but this okay. is, no, it just. Let's go back I, to when you guys were talking I, about I, taking to Twitter. I, that was fun. I just, I, it just occurred to me. Maybe. <laughs> Hold the, on, Peter. We're about to find something. <laughs> maybe the glaze <laughs> is saliva from our mouth. That's a oh, remnant that remains on the Bill's dick. Got it. That that's might be the glazing. It could be. So we are technically sucking their dick, but it's the after effects of it that's the glaze. We have sucked their dick. Is that right, Hank? No, I think I think PFT's initial point is correct that like glazing is used incorrectly almost all the time. Okay, yeah. so what is the correct term? Are we sucking their dick? No, we're getting glazed. You're knee padding. We're knee. <laughs> that's sucking their dick. Yeah. yeah. Or playing volleyball. Yeah. Uh, Peter. So Russell Wilson. <laughs> Peter. Yeah. Peter, Peter you still here? <laughs> we lost you. Uh, I mean, literally, I, literally, literally, my brain is on that elevator already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna bring you back. <laughs> Russell Wilson. Is he going to be a Denver Bronco next year? Oh, hold on. And if not, is he oh, going to be a starter? Off. Oh. Who's is that calling? Russell? You can pick it up. Is it Source? It's Sean McVay. 
hilarious. Sean Payton. Oh, oh no can, can you ask him? Yeah. Yeah. At, no, no. Do Calm back. He, doesn't go he's well. been on the show. He'll probably I say. Yeah. He likes you guys. P- Peter is the number one Sean Glazer. I am. Yeah. Sean McVay, yeah. Sean Payton, he's McDermott. Loves, I yeah. like the name Sean McDermott. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I, I don't know. I Look, I think, because I talked to Sean after that all went down, and his whole thing was like, we didn't, I didn't say he's off the team. He's. It's not like Derek Carr where it's like, pack your bags. Don't like. He was the number two those next two games. They went with Stidham, and I think Russell Wilson obviously took the high road, and people thought what Peyton did was outrageous. And the things that were said about him I thought were a little over the top over a player decision. In the media, you'd think he did something right. like horrible to right. a bench a quarterback. Um, I, I would think they have to look at other directions, but there also has to be a suitor and someone who wants to take on Russell's contract. So right. I haven't. I mean, I don't. I, I know Sean likes Russell Wilson and likes him as a guy, and I think that they were just trying to get a kickstart to the season at the end. That sounds like it's bullshit. It's not. Their offense was was you know was st- struggling at the end. And they wanted to go to Stidham, so I think they're going to have their conversations. But we'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, Peter, thank you so much. Hopefully, the glazing uh, interlude there doesn't keep you off of our show. Um, you probably in his head he was like. <laughs> Simmons never does this. Simmons what the fuck? Do this. No, 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 Listen, it. you weren't part of it. It was our conversation. Yeah, we kept. Uh, and I hope I didn't offend any uh, white white guys in their 30s and 40s who bought a cool pair of Jordans and was no, because I, I know how that, I, I see a lot of that, and also now uh, a lot of women do that as well. And it's Listen, like, I, th- just my whole thing with shoes is just wear them. Yeah. Wear your shoes. Don't buy shoes to just look at them. Wear I'm them. I'm not an endorser for yeah. Aloe. Really comfortable shoes. If you want, Aloe.com. Go for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, All right. Sorry. Well, Peter, thank you so much. You are the best. You can watch them on Good Morning Football. We'll maybe see you uh, in I want to come to Chicago. No, forget Vegas. Yeah. I want to come to Chicago come, one time. Come. Come ball out. I just want to hang, hang with Mincy. Yeah. Come watch some games with us. Hang with Mincy. He'll probably get you in trouble. Well, Mincy's got better sources than you do. He does. Yeah, uh, how does he break. fall for that? He's, he's uh, scooping everyone. Yeah. How does, how does he fall for that? He just... He's Mincy. And who's the guy from this office who was doing it? It was just some, it was a couple of our guys. We just thought, like, Travis, let's just yeah. screw with them. And also, the the best part, this was all uh, Mincy getting duped when Lane Kiffin uh, was potentially going to Sources Alabama. Tell me. And he said he, 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 Posted a text change where he's like, I'm not going to reveal the source. And then he said, a source at the Seattle Times. <laughs> <laughs> and Seattle like, Times. I mean, there's like two two people writing there in the sports section. What are we talking about, Mincy? So, yeah, yeah, I love listening to you guys. Uh, congrats on all the success in Chicago. And it's cool to watch from afar. I'm jealous. It seems like you guys have a blast. And it feels like... Uh, it's only it's only getting bigger and bigger. Schrager is a number is like a real like Barcelona. I just watch he it. Text me about Frank and Mincy. It's like he loves when the Jerry, whack pack. When, yeah. when Jerry got the hole in one, like I think like a tear, like one lone tear, like came up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> watched in real time. Yeah. I tweeted about it in real time, like during like the heat of like NFL like yeah. coaching that, stuff. Jerry yeah. said that he's like Peter Schrager, Tom Brady, everyone, <laughs> was <tweeting>. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> yeah. all the guys. All right, well, thank you so much, Peter. Awesome guys, thank you. Peter Schrager was brought to you by our great friends over at Chevy. I love Chevy. I've got a Chevy. I spent my own hard-earned money on a Chevy because I believe in Chevys. And the Chevy Silverado has commanding grit. It's got unstoppable grit, legendary capability and dependability too. We've all spent time, seat time, as they call it in the biz, behind the wheel of a Silverado. And we're not just truck guys. We're Chevy truck guys. You know about the ZR2 family of trucks, lifted, ready for anything straight from the factory. Now Silverado is taking it to the next level with even more Silverado truck tech, like available Super Cruise. Only Super Cruise lets you drive hands-free and tow hands-free on more than 400,000 miles of compatible roads. With over 138 million miles of hands-free driving by customers, Super Cruise will help you get to your adventure energized, and it will help you drive you home. Go to Chevy.com. You can check out Silverado, build your own Silverado online, and learn important details about Super Cruise. Okay, let's wrap up Fire Fest of the Week. Henry, what's up? What's up, guys? What's up, Henry? Henry. Hey, guys. Henry. Hey, Hank. 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 I'm sad that this is the second to last weekend of football. That's not my Fire Fest, but I just it's just dawning on me. Just got to embrace yeah, it. But Sunday's going to be great. Then you got the combine. March Madness, draft, March Madness. College basketball has been brazy. A lot, of, a lot of good teams lose. Are there any good teams in college basketball yes. this year? Yes. UConn's good. Houston's good. North Carolina's good. Purdue's good. Purdue. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. That's that's. Yeah. I like I like Houston. I like Tennessee. Yeah, those are my two guys this year. Okay, Hank. That was college basketball preview. We are a week and a half out. Hmm. This week, I had, you know, the whole month I've been taking it, trying to take it seriously and, and getting prepared 
learning a song on the guitar, writing a lot. And on Monday was the first time I was like, all right, I'm going to turn my camera on and start to practice, you know, reading the material and, and, you know, putting the show together, getting things in order, getting the, the videos and pictures and stuff I need. And I realized while I was, you know, reading off the things that I wrote that I thought were funny and, and realizing how hard it is to, you know, present or whatever, like, uh, speak publicly alone, how bad it's going to be. And, and my anxiety has been at an all time high. I've probably lost like every night I get in bed early before midnight and I'm up to like 3 a.m. Mm. Just, 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 it's going to be a relief. Fear. It's going to be a relief when you're done. You know what, Hank? I'll the good thing is, no matter what, it's only sixty minutes, and it's probably it's gonna be like the worst sixty minutes of my life. But yeah, when it's over, no matter what, when it's over, it will be over. I'll give you a compliment. Um, I've been watching your progress on guitar. Hank has Hank has learned guitar pretty well for like a, a true beginner. Yeah, I you I, sound good. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know I gave some away in my my joke last time, but uh, this will probably be part of it too. Is I've spent probably like 30 hours learning guitar for like three minutes of, of my stand up set. Yeah. When I could have spent that doing something else, but I, I, I do, I have enjoyed it. You I, sound good. The yeah. guitar, the guitar is, is one of the only things that helps me relax. You're going to be great, sweetie. You're going to kill it. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I'm not. It's, it is what it is. It just is what it is. It is what it is. Fire Fest of the week. Lost a lot of sleep this week. Well, okay. you're, you're also like last night I was up till four. You're performing for on, no reason. on Wednesday night, Tuesday night. Oh, Tuesday night next week. That's right. no Wednesday night. Wednesday night, next week Wednesday night. Oh, the at, at the Chicago. Yeah. yeah, that's only like ten minutes. That's yeah, but it'll be good. It'll be good to get you up on stage. Yeah, you got this, Hank. This is gonna be great. The AWLs are excited. But there's nothing. Yeah, that that part is like just don't watch. Okay. Don't don't buy it. <laughs> no one watch. Don't no buy one it. buy it. Don't attend. Don't come. Don't do it. Don't. Come. I'm gonna come. Oh, I'm gonna come so hard. You know what I'm going to come to. Okay. All right, Jay. Nice. All right, PFT. You, you, like, you can see the thousand miles yard stare with, yeah, with be, Hank right it's now. It's becoming very real for he's Hank. He's saying it, and he's like he's feeling it as you watch this. I'm so well, glad that we didn't have to do this. Yeah. So glad. Yeah, like that. I mean, you guys would have done better at it, but I also would be curious to see how you would have tackled it. But yeah, last night we were at dinner, and, and Rowan started talking about it. And then like he was like, what are you going to do? We were walking through it. He was just you know being nice, being conversational, and, and it just... It got bad. Hank's already started to blame us for this, by the way. I'm not blaming you. No, no, anyone. you did last night. Last night at dinner, Hank was like, these these assholes are making me do this. People were like, why are you doing this uh, performance, Hank? He's because because of those two right there. No, we all, we were in the same deal. Right. And we would have had to do it if we You should have just it. picked better games. Yeah, I'm not blaming you guys. Yeah, all. okay. You're yeah. not mad at us. Uh, okay, PFT, your uh, fire fest. Uh, my fire fest of the week is so it, it is our birthdays next week. This is um, the last week that we have as thirty eight year olds yep. before we turn thirty nine. Hank has been saying that we're forty mm -hmm. for the last like month. <laughs> That's uh, no, you have. We yeah. I mean, had one conversation where I I knew you guys were getting up there in the thirties, and I was like, "You guys are turning 40? 40. Yeah, but I, I Hank's telling people I, that we're forty. I mm -hmm. did it in a questioning way because I wasn't sure, and you guys were like, "I can't believe you just said that." No, we're we're almost thirty nine. Uh, it's a realization that's slowly creeping over us. But for my birthday on Saturday, I've actually reserved time for myself in an F-18 flight simulator. Hell yes. And a Boeing flight simulator. So I'm going to see if I can actually land a plane and fly an F-18. Uh, my Firefest, that sounds awesome. My Firefest about the whole thing is the company that I'm going to be flying uh, in their simulator, they also sell simulators. Mm. And I I am like 90% sure that on Saturday I'm going to spend $10,000 on an F-18. Why don't we get one for the office? On an F Why don't we get one for the office? Good question, Big Cat. I wanted that and you said no. When? When we were just, when we were talking about what to put in the office, in I Chicago. don't remember that conversation, but we could I, do it. I talked about an F eighteen simulator. I don't remember saying no to that. I, I we heard, could do it. I heard a lot of no's regarding the F eighteen simulator. Well, if it was wait, like building wait, wait, an wait, entire, wait, 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 wait. yeah, I don't think that. What? Yeah, no, it one hundred percent happened. Yes, I. I were you gonna say hey. that was the one thing I wanted in the in the office? Yeah, yeah, we had that conversation. It was no. Yeah, Thank well, but you. I'm saying it's a yes now. Where? Oh, that's the problem. How big is it? Dude, it's not. It's not. It's not the size. It's now. not the size of a I actual F eighteen. Yeah, but I was. I'm. I'm saying yes, depending on like. Yeah. Yes. If you if can we, put it in your studio, you can have it. You have a whole studio. I've got. Well, there's other places in the. We office. We can find it. I, I'm Where? gonna say 
Y- yes. No, no. What? No? I'm what saying hair? no. <laughs> no, it, it's, I heard yes, and quite frankly, what are you going to do if I just show up with an F-18 simulator? I think I'm we'll just put it, put it somewhere. Studio. Yeah, you'll just put it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. In your studio. Exactly. Where you want to put it? Yeah, I'll put it anywhere. Yeah. We'll bring it in the back door. Uh, but yeah, the fire Fest, I'm probably going to spend ten grand on an F-18 simulator you also have a house. this weekend. I do own a house. That's that's accurate. I think you should buy it, and we'll put it. Somewhere. I would probably get. We'll find. Somewhere. I would probably get more uh, more flight time in the office. Yeah, we'll find somewhere. Office. We can find somewhere. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty excited about that. We can find somewhere. I'm, I'm going to be. Studio. No, we'll find. Well, somewhere. Well, there's a, a giant question mark desk in there. We'll find somewhere. There's no room in the macro. PFT, studio. you know what? Where Just is there room? Buy it and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> Green screen room. We'll figure it out later. We'll yeah. figure it out later. Yeah, that's uh, okay. My game plan is going to be purchase it, have it dropped off at the office. I'm now aligned now with it's, you. Now so it's, it's, it's us versus Hank. We can win this battle. Now it's someone else's problem to yeah. deal with. But yeah, uh, it, it is going to be fun and I'm going to be able to, to fly a plane and achieve all my dreams because I'm afraid of heights, but I love flying planes. So this You're feels flying to a me. plane on the plane yesterday. I was, yeah. I was doing a flight simulator on the plane yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Uh, so, yeah, that's my that's my fire fest. Uh, Jake, can you bring Peter Schrager's jacket out to the lobby? Yep. He forgot it. Oh, my other fire fest is I just realized right now I, I left my Apple Watch in the shower at the hotel. Oh, so you got to go back and get it. Yeah, you got to go back and get it. Um, all right, my fire fest, I got two. One is I didn't realize this was a thing, but i pretty sure uh, Max wants us dead. Yeah. So we were flying uh, from Chicago, New York yesterday, and this is totally independent because I mentioned it to Hank and he mentioned. It. So what happened with what did Max say to you? Yesterday we were we had there's like a couple of us trying to set up a tether ball pole uh, in the gym, and Max kind of like not creepily, but just sauntered over, kind of like uh, hovered over a little bit, like he didn't walk with purpose. He just kind of like hovered over and in my head I was like what is Max doing is he going to help us he didn't he just kind of walked over walked past me and was like hope you have a safe safe trip Hank safe travels and Wait, then walked away Jake didn't take his jacket what is he doing whose jacket did he take yeah I don't know maybe that's Jake's jacket oh okay all right all right but he just kind of walked past the group and was like safe travels Hank hope you have a good trip and then kept walking and I was in my head like that was weird it was weird and then when I was walking out of the door, Max said to me, he turned to me, said, I hope you have a really safe flight. Really safe. So he wants us dead. I explained yeah. to him that I was like, it's me, PFT, and Hank so, on a plane so, together. If we die, your life is over. So wait, when, when he said it to Hank, was he, it sounds like it was kind of a normal way to say like safe travels. And then Hank, you said like, what does that mean? And then he got that idea oh. and then rolled it over to you and really leaned into but it. No, I don't crazy. even think I, I don't think I, I, I didn't say that to him. Yeah. Just, it was in my head. I was like, that was, odd. he wants us dead. And I, I, I tried to express to him that like of all the people in the world that are rooting for us to not die. What? No, no, his je- no, leave it for him. Oh, leave, it. leave it for him in the lobby. Okay. Yeah. Of all the people who don't, who need us alive, Max is at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. Like, I have life insurance. My kids will be okay. Like, Max will not be okay. He's got nothing. But he wants us dead. What about what about memes? Memes, Who is, needs a, us memes more is a memes fucking Max. he's a rascal. He he'll to quote Peter Schrader, he memes a rascal. He would I would I would bet memes would find something pretty quickly. He would land on He's got back. rascal te- you know, tendencies. We, we have a lot memes, of got a million on TikTok. Yeah, right, see, good job, memes will figure it out. We got a, we got a lot of uh podcasts at Barstool Sports that need somebody who's a full time employee to just roast them. So uh memes would be able to find find a spot, I'm sure. Um yeah, Max I don't know what his deal is. I don't know what I don't know why Max is it almost felt like he was like a it's like a weird almost he like he was upset he didn't come type thing and like passive aggressive. Yeah, all right. Well we're gonna we're gonna face him and do the lottery ball in a second, so we'll find out. But uh my other fire fest and I want to apologize to Bills fans, I feel like enough time has passed. If you were watching us on the stream on Sunday, uh you noticed I was wearing a hat for the majority of the game. Uh in the last five minutes I took off my hat. Um, shout out to 47 brand. They re-released a bunch of Super Bowl hats. Uh, the hat I took off and was wearing all day is this hat. And it is the Bills Giants Super Bowl wide right. Mm. So I was wearing this hat for the majority of the game and then the Bills lost with a wide right. I feel awful about it. This also just shows you that like jinxes are real. Vibes are real. 
I'm sorry. It's big of you to apologize for uh, jinxing the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Um, I know that, you know, as somebody that's in sports media, if you ever did something that would jinx the Buffalo Bills and outwardly, you know, ruin their season, uh, you were the type of person to say that you're sorry for it. Yes. Which is very big. I don't think everybody would be like no, that. No, not everyone would do that, but I am sorry. It just, I grabbed, like I said, I bought a bunch of them. I just grabbed this one. And then it happened, and I was like, "I." you could see in the stream I took my hat off because I was, like, feeling where it was going. And to be wearing the wide right hat while a wide right happens, mm -hmm. bad vibes. So apologies. Apologies. I'll burn this hat for everyone. Although 47 Brand makes the best hats. There's also a good I, – I feel like most Bills fans opted out of sports podcasts on Monday. Yeah. I would. I certainly would if I was a Bills fan. I'd probably not even be back, but we're probably getting a big percentage of them back for this week's game and now and now you just yeah volunteer that to yeah. Him, yeah all right my bad guys my bad hand up uh all right jake finish us off yeah so a few weeks ago you guys requested a trophy case for the studio yes yeah. eventually it got there and i tried setting it up by myself and it was impossible i was just staring at it for an hour the instruction manual had no words mm -hmm. yeah it's a glass trophy case you did a great job jake well, we, we now have a lombardi like fantasy football lombardi it, oh we're gonna need a real lombardi Right, it's gonna be expensive. Yeah, that's we're fine. Gonna get we're, I mean, we're, we just we're buying a flight simulator, so yeah, yeah we can afford it. We're gonna yeah. get an AVN award. Yeah, but it, we have it, some Emmys. Got all of them. Yeah, but it took like three hours. Shout out Ryan in Chicago for helping me put it together. But it was you got to know your strengths. I'm not a building yeah, guy. I'm not. A, I really wanted to order a Task Rabbit and just like let it happen. Yeah, you had mm -hmm. Ryan do it. But I had Ryan. But you did best. a good job. The, the trophy Thank case you. rocks. So let me know what else you guys want. I'll order the trophies. Okay. I love that. Uh, all right. I'm going to call Max right now. We'll do uh, the lottery balls. By the way, we got some big interviews coming up. Just so everyone get excited. Super we Bowl week's going to be great. Big interviews coming up. Big, big interviews coming up. Ones that the They're so big. girls are going to be very happy. They're almost about. too big. Are they almost too big? Almost. I said almost too big. Right, They're actually nice. just the right size. Hey, Max, real quick before you do the lottery ball, why the fuck do you want us dead? What? Why do you want us dead? You were hoping okay. our plane would crash. That's actually the exact opposite of what I was saying. Okay. And also, Hank, Gaslight Central trying to say that I say that he doesn't do anything. I've never once insinuated that. Yeah, it might have been towards me. All right, that's more towards me. Yeah. But you, you, when you tell someone you hope they have a really safe flight, that is 100% being sarcastic. That is not true. Yeah. I was hoping that you were safe and you ended up being safe. Though really is – when you say, like, have a Never safe flight, that that's totally normal, really changes the entire tone of that sentence. Well, I mean, you could have, like, a – there could be turbulence. Yeah, like, you want us mm -hmm. dead. He wants us dead. All right, I, I want no turbulence. I wanted it to be completely – safe and sound and you guys just have a lovely flight max I, why are you wearing a leonard skinner t-shirt right now <laughs> stevie ray vaughn it's not true i'm wearing i'm wearing this okay all right you ready for numbers um all right this is uh, this is honestly tough because i'm i can't look yeah you can't look 71 make sure max isn't looking 18 18 for jake oh. ask the other 20. 48 um do, wait do i click select i click start and you I might have select. to hit restart so it drops the old ball, and then you do start, and then select is how you hit it. All right. And put the put it on there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Go. He's not looking. The ball is there. It's seven. Is it seven? Two. Two. Oh. Two. Jeter. Two. Two. Okay. All right, thank you, Max. Yeah. All right, hopefully we have a really safe flight back. Yeah, I hope you have a really safe flight. See, he wants us dead. All right, goodbye. If we die, you're fucked. If we if we die, I want to say on the record right now, if if we die in a plane crash, part of my take podcast, do not hire Max for any job ever for the rest of his life. I'm one for one on on success rate. Of I want him blackballed. Really I want him blackballed from the world. All right, goodbye. He wants us dead. The really. Love you guys.